Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Record of attendance. Linda's got that. Any declarations of conflict of interest? Approval of agenda, additions or deletions. So I have an extra sheet here. I have 10A as Crosswalk Meadows, 10B Hawthorne Street Streetscape Project Tender, C, 10C Christmas Promotions. Do I have any more additions? Councillor Landro? Thank you, Your Worship. I'm gonna, I've got a few things I'm gonna raise. First of all, I'm gonna go on a point of information, which bring it on the floor. Um, the purpose of Committee of the Whole when Committee of the Whole was structured, and then CAO can step in on this, and maybe I might be wrong, I'm sorry that the solicitor is not here. The intention of Committee of the Whole was that we were going to eliminate a lot of the small committees, uh, such as your Public Works Committee, your Finance Committee, etc. And the business that comes before the Committee of the Whole is normally the business that would go before those committees. And so we kind of put all our committees into one, and that we call Committee of the Whole. Now, I'm looking at the agenda of today's meeting, Your Worship, and I'm puzzled because there are items on this agenda that, in my opinion, don't belong on a committee of the whole. It's a council business, and it should be going to council uh, because what we're going to be doing today is discussing, uh, for example, requests for uh, decisions on a variety of things. That actually will go to council, so we can discuss it again at council, so we're like double, double whammy. Correspondence, I noticed that and that is now on the Committee of the Whole agenda. It used to always be on the Council agenda. And what's happening is, in my opinion, we have a two-hour meeting, of which I'm taking up time saying this, that gives us, we are in a rush, we tend to be pushed, and we don't have time to talk to staff about our issues and concerns. And I'm wondering if maybe we could, for the very least, move correspondence back to where it should be, in my opinion, and normally, and most councils do it, in the council agenda. And some of the business items um, that maybe we could, for example, like your, your minimum housing standards bylaw, I'm, I'm putting my head trying to figure, okay, which committee in the good old days would this be handled under? Um, request for decision, that's a council item. Um, the brush and branch pickup, yes, that's valid because that's part of uh, the, the public works. So I'm just seeking some understanding because what's happening, we seem to be front end loading committee of the whole and loading nothing in council. And council meetings tend not to have the discussion that we should be having. So that was just my thoughts. Can you wait one second till he answers? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Go ahead, uh, CAO. Sure. Yeah. We uh, we went to the committee of the whole, uh, I believe, it was six years ago, and the intention was was I guess twofold. One was to to eliminate some of the committees, the public works, the finance, and and bring those all to one to one uh, table. The other intention, though, uh, goes in line with our council agenda's policy, and that is that that all items should go through an advisory committee before they arrive at the council table. So this is your opportunity to see the items for the first time, to discuss them, uh, to perhaps make a recommendation or request additional information from staff or, or just simply uh, uh, set them aside, uh, delay them or table them, I guess. So uh, those, are, those are the purposes of Committee of the Whole is, is A, to, to, since we were all on finance, we were all on public works, is to just call it Committee of the Whole and eliminate some of the advisory committees, but also to, to give you that extra opportunity to see the issues uh, before they arrive at the council table so you aren't left in making a decision uh, at that table um, maybe without the, the advantage of having a couple of weeks to think about what you might do based on the information that you've been provided. Uh, the item of the minimum standards bylaw was actually at the last council table, <coughs> at the last council meeting for I believe second reading and it was referred to Committee of the Whole for further information. And so that, that also sometimes happens is, is when something arrives at Council and there is a question that can't be answered at the moment, it gets referred here and this is the opportunity where staff are present to, to answer those questions. Go ahead. So, so what you were saying then that all business of Council before it comes, so Council will become the Senate and the House of Commons will be in Committee of the Whole. Is that the structure we're moving into? Those are, th uh, those are your words. Um, my explanation was 
to, consistent with the, the policy for the council agenda is that items would come through an advisory committee and since we don't have as many committees as we used to have, Committee of the Whole is, is the committee that picks up a lot of these items. The correspondence item, because uh, that was something else you asked about, uh, that was put on this agenda and I think that may go back to the six years, I'm not sure about that, we can look back and see, but that was simply to put those for information items, but which agenda they're on really doesn't make any difference if they're just for information. My only concern is the correspondence it says for action and uh, I'm only, my only thinking is, is I would like to see the Committee of the Whole spending time doing the overall business of council. Now I can understand the Remembrance Day policy because our council meeting is going to fall after the Remembrance Day policy. But I'm just, my only concern is I, I'm, I don't see, once it's discussed around this table and we go to council, it's pretty well a done deal because we've done the vote, it's all over. It's very unusual to have, to come back and turn down a motion or, or an ascend a motion, but if, if that's, it does happen, but if that's the will of council, I'm just, I'd like to see at least the correspondence go back to council, if at the very least, because I'm just looking at the length of meetings, because we've got a lot to cover today and I've wasted 10 minutes already. Um, so I just wanted to voice a concern. Councillor Mooney. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I'd like to, because there might be a motion out of this, and I know mm -hmm. we'll be discussing it because I see the uh, Winchesters here. I'd like to put Jarvis Road, Argyle Street on the agenda, and I'd also like to put uh, Heritage Streetscape and uh, reinstatement of the Taxi Advisory Committee. Okay, so 10 D, E, and F. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead, Councillor. I'd like to make a motion that we amend the agenda to move correspondence to the next council meeting. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Okay, good. So can I have a motion to approve the agenda with the additions? Oh, an amendment. Aye. Well, wait a second now. Are we doing that today? Go ahead. Uh, I had one. Uh, the uh, looking at, I wanted to see what the take is on reinstating the uh, fire fire committee fire fire committee. Put that on the agenda. We, we used to have it and we, uh, we, dis, we disbanded it and uh, I... Uh, so fire committee? Fire committee, yeah. NG. Yeah. Okay, good. So just so I'm clear, you asking for that today? Starting today? Okay. So with the amendment and additions? Moved. Seconded. Any more discussion? Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary. Motion carried. Council priorities, CAO. Go ahead. Thank you, Worship. The, uh, the report is, is attached for information. If I, if I could, though, I'd like to highlight just, just one particular item that I think is, is particularly important for Council, and it has to do with the, the fiscal review uh, process that's currently, uh, currently underway. So what happened a few years ago is the uh, Union of Nova Scotia Municipalities uh, took up the town's task force report, I believe that's where it came through, and uh, tried to engage the provincial government on a review of the equalization formula that, that uh, provides uh, funding to some municipalities. The response from government was that if they were going to review equalization, they were going to review the entire relationship, the entire financial relationship between uh, municipalities and the province. And so with that, a uh, a joint committee, uh, including deputy ministers, CAOs, elected officials, uh, was struck and undertook a huge amount of work to look at the entire relationship, the financial relationship between the province and, and the uh, municipalities. So recently, uh, I believe last week, that, re that set of reports and recommendations was released. There are 42 recommendations, of which two have been, uh, have been I guess, crossed out by cabinet. They've, they, they don't believe that those should uh, be under consideration, but they are within the, the package. So this is the, this is the package of information, the reports that are available online. Uh, 
on the um, uh, UNSM website, and uh, there's a lot to them. Th that is kind of the tip of the iceberg in terms of the reports and the work that was done. The, it is of, of huge importance uh, to Council the, what the outcome of this process is, because this is, as I see it, perhaps a once-in-a-generation opportunity. Every, every year or so, uh, this program or that program gets reviewed for, for its effectiveness or its funding level, what have you. But this is a review of the entire relationship between, between municipalities and the province. And so we need to take some time and, and review the, the, uh, the recommendations and make comment back on them because we might not get the opportunity again. Uh, the last time such an exercise was taken, t took place was back during the service, service exchange process, which was in the uh, mid-90s. And so uh, I'm preparing a response uh, as a discussion paper, let's call it, uh, for you to, to sink your teeth in. I'll be preparing a presentation for you to help you understand and hopefully to answer any questions. My, uh, my discussion paper is, is so far here and uh, it's, it's only in, in the first, first cut. So it is a, it's, a, it's a big set of issues to try and wrap our heads around. So what I would propose is that we, um, that we schedule a meeting in the not too distant future, I'm gonna say the week perhaps after the UNSM conference to begin the process of reviewing the recommendations. Uh, the reason why it is so important and why, uh, look, let me, let me I talk about why it's so important, but the process for providing feedback on this is, is set in, in a very structured way. So December 15th has been established as a deadline for submissions. Submissions must come from councils, not from individual councillors, staff, or, or uh, uh, mayors, or what have you. So uh, the only feedback that will be accepted is, uh, is through councils that has been approved by councils at the council table. It is all to be submitted to UNSM. UNSM will forward all of the recommendations, all of the feedback to uh, the province, and they will post all the feedback on the website. So we'll be able to see the kind of kind of reactions and responses other municipalities have had to the to the re recommendations. And then I understand that the all the feedback will be given back to the to the fiscal review committee for their consideration, and ultimately uh, some some recommendations will go forward to government for their consideration. So as I said, it's, it's a, uh, I've spent quite a bit of time on this over the last few weeks. Uh, I've, spent, I've been to three presentations of the 42 recommendations to try and understand and to ask questions myself so I can better inform you folks. So hopefully uh, when we have that meeting uh, in, let's say, two weeks' time, I'll be in a position to, uh, to answer all of your questions or if I can't answer them all there, I will take them away and we'll reconvene when I'm able to get the answers. So December 15th is our deadline to submit. So our December council meeting should be our target for approving mm -hmm. a, a response to the uh, fiscal review recommendations. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for that information. And uh, I've read some of the report, uh, just very briefly, probably a half a dozen pages. It's, it's quite thick. Uh, my eyes are not that great to stay on the computer that long and do it. I find it too, too difficult. But I'm glad that you're working towards summing it all up, giving, giving us a presentation. We're going to get, have a chance to talk about this at UNSM uh, next week, which is really great. Uh, you're looking at a half day, full day. Uh, I, I would believe it probably would be a, probably a full day. Would it be the first, middle, or the end of the week? Uh, I'm only asking what it's convenient for other councillors and yourself and the mayor sitting around the table. I'm good for any day, uh, I, I think. Uh, well, let me, let, me, let me think here now. Uh, I, I'll take that back. Uh, in, November, in November the 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st, I'll be away uh, in Halifax. Uh, so with uh, Councillor Mooney will be also away. Uh, so just to give you those dates, but if it's before that or after that, I, I'm, I'm available. Go ahead. I, I think it's a, it's a good call on your part. I think it will take a full day, whether you want to do that in one sitting or in, in two sittings. Uh, you've probably noticed by these afternoon meetings that I'm probably sharper in the morning. So uh, if we if we start early in the morning, we can go to either noon or go through the full day. 
Just further to that from my own experience, I always find the two days works better, especially your morning that gives staff a chance in the afternoon to collect data and then to come back the next day with a more crafted document. So personally, I would like to see two morning sessions, if at all possible, earlier the better for me, and then that'll give the staff a chance to reflect on what the discussions were and come back rather than try to snowball it right through in one day. It's a little bit rushed, so just for my 10 cents worth. Good. Do you need a motion for Linda to set that up or we're just going to take care of that? Yep. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So are we good on the priorities? Did you have anything else you want to share there? Go ahead. Uh, just in, if anybody had any questions on any of that, I'm happy to answer questions now or, or later. Deputy Mayor. Just a comment, uh, <clears throat> Jeff. It's uh, wonderful to see that document that you have emailed us. It, it, it's good reading, and, and I like it because it's where I want to go. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Okay, staff report. CAO. Oh, sorry. Just one other thing, Your Worship. Next week at UNSM, further to what Jeff is talking about, Yarmouth does have a number of resolutions before. And there is one particular one that deals with taxation, uh, et cetera, that we put to the floor. Um, the resolutions committee has recommended against it. Um, however, um, it does affect a lot of rural small towns. And I've had a long chat with Lyle Goldberg with UNSM on it. So uh, with proper pushing on the floor on our part, we're quite confident it may get through. Um, the intent here is to send a signal to the minister uh, that we're not happy on how slow they're moving on the town's task force. Uh, basically now the latest excuse is, is this fiscal review. We're not going to make any changes to the MGA until the results of the fiscal review come in. Well, by the time they come in and their process, another year will be shot. And there are some very key issues in the town's task force, especially in taxations rate variables. And Jeff's well attuned as to what's going on there. So I'm really urging those councillors who are at UNSM next week, we'll, we need a little bit of an oomph and do a little lobbying to get that uh, resolution through. For big centers such as CBRM and HRM, it's not an issue because they've got a strong enough taxation base, it doesn't affect them. But for small towns like us and rural municipalities, it does mean a fair amount. So that resolution will be interesting discussion at the floor. So I just wanted to add that as a sidebar to the CAO's report. And just to echo what Councilor Langell said, I think it's imperative that we get up and speak to that resolution, even though it wasn't recommended by the UNSM board um, for the resolutions. Uh, it's imperative for us to talk on that. and. And I think it's more of a kick in the minister's pants to get that town's task force up and going and give us the mechanisms that we need to create economic development, not only in our community, but communities right across the province. So I urge every councillor that's going to go to the UNSM to get up and speak to it. But because it, it affects us, it affects Amherst, Sydney, every, well, it affects, it affects everybody. So uh, I'm glad that you brought that up. Good. Staff reports. That's you, CAO. Go ahead. Uh, the report is there uh, for your information, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Fire department report. Welcome, Chief. Any questions for the Chief? Good. Go ahead. Your, uh, your recruitment, is that still uh, everybody that applied for it or volunteered for it? Are they still uh, enthusiastic uh, about uh, staying with the uh, fire department, like your, your new recruits that you, you've uh, brought on? Well, isn't that good news? Yeah. Okay. How is your building, uh, your training building coming out, out there? It's Do you want to come speak up here so perhaps just so I don't know if anybody can hear you or not. 
I know you, you speak quite loud, but. Uh, the training building's going very well. Um, it's it's uh, just had the roof poured about three days ago, and uh, we haven't seen any problems with it. There was one minor problem with a, uh, a drainage thing, but that was taken care of, no problem. So okay. It's going very well. the, the, the building itself, is, is, it a, is, is it a smokehouse? I had a little bit of experience with a, with a smokehouse when part of the training that I took in firefighting years ago for, for ship firefighting and stuff like that, of course. I took up in Cape Britain, Port Hawkesbury. Is it similar to that? Is that what it's supposed to be? Uh, uh, a place where you go in and uh, there's a mock-up mock -up house, rooms and stuff like that in there, like furniture, the whole bit, and, and you go in there and find if there's anybody in there, you go look for people in there. Is that sort of yeah. a deal it is? Yes, it is. Uh, it's built like a house, but it's also built so that we can use below grade firefighting, above grade firefighting. Uh, we can use it uh, as any type of building, any type of occupancy there is. Uh, we're going to have furniture in it. Uh, we're yeah. going to have um, uh, stuff on the roof so we can do hoisting, all different types of evolutions there. Okay. Uh, it's, it's really built like a house, but it's made for every type of evolution for training. Are you going to uh, give the counselors a tour of that when it's all said and done? Sure, we can put some bunker gear on you, and you guys can come out and enjoy Well, I don't it. know about that. I, <laughs> I didn't uh, like yes, it the first we, time I've done it. <laughs> yeah, we can set up a tour, no problem. Yeah. Um, um, it's also, it's not going to have live fire. It's going to have smoke, like you, like you mentioned, because okay. of the environment these days. You don't want to have yeah. live fire. You don't want to yeah. have any type of no, no. Uh, fuels used. Like no. ga we used to take gasoline, pour it on top of diesel before, and yeah. light it up, right? No. You, you no, I, 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 the, the one I went to it didn't have that. Mm. It, and they, they had, when, when they done a training on that, it was a mock, it was a half a ship that they done, and they did have a live fire in there where you went in, in a live fire, mm. and put the live fire out. But anyway, that's, I was hoping that would be similar to what, what, what the, we had in uh, Port Hawkesbury, and that's exactly what it is, so that's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Chief. Planning Department report. For the Planning Department, the can you, can, Would you come? Yes, thank you. Planning Department September report was distributed prior to this meeting. So if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. It's busy. It's busy. Good. And that's a that's a good thing. So yeah. Go ahead. I, I just have one one quick question that I that I seen here. Uh, just caught my eye again. It's the flag out at uh, is is that still a problem? I mean uh, is it is it not uh, not heeding to the uh, the bylaw? Is it? it? It doesn't. They're not allowed to have a flag with the way our bylaw is written at the moment. Okay, but th th this has been ongoing, uh, CEO, for some time. Uh, it, it just it, it goes on this paper. It doesn't look good on paper. Uh, if, if there's if there's a problem, uh, uh, it should be an easy fix. The flag is the flag. If he's got it there, then. It don't seem to be a big problem with me. I thought we had this problem solved six months ago or more. The AO? Uh, so did I. Where, where are you seeing that in the report? Right here. 136 Haley Road, yeah. I, I was just trying to find it here. Page four, yeah. I thought it was yeah, on the roof yeah, and it was I think, okay. I think that is, that is an error, er, error because, as it says, it's on the roof, but in fact the flagpole is not on the roof. The flagpole is in front of the building on the ground, so it is in fact a ground sign. And we, we have no issue with ground signs. And I think that's been resolved. But so I, th this is an error then, right? I stand to be corrected. But okay. Okay. So we're, 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 we'll look into that then? Yeah. Rather than just bringing it up on, on this here? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was just my question. Thank you. Any more questions for the planner? Just have a comment. Go ahead, CAO. I just want to comment on the, uh, on the building activity. I did include it in my report, but uh, this last, the last two months, have been the busiest August and September in terms of building activity that we've had in the last six years. And so that's a, a very positive sign and I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Good. Okay, thank you. Operational services. Our engineer. So we're dealing with number two. I, I just had a question for next steps on Hawthorne Street streetscapes, but that's coming up later. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. And and the LED light conversion. I just have a question. I just got a couple calls about about um, street lights. 
that are out but on side roads. So, so what happens in the side streets? Uh, they're under our responsibility as well, and we're uh, going to be looking after those once the contractor comes in to start the conversion. Okay. We'll own everything. So. Uh, okay. Good. Uh, Councillor Mooney, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Dave, uh, what's the status on the light standards for Yarmouth South? Um, majority of them are up. The wiring is underway. We still have to get the electrical services installed. So, uh, is, and the other question, uh, I had a concern from a citizen the other day. The other question was, uh, the ones on Main Street itself between uh, here and 4th Street, they look like some of them could uh, use a little upgrading or maintenance, especially at the bottom. I know there's, uh, they said there's been some wires and some other, looks like electrical components sticking out of the bottom or the base of the, uh, the light standard. What's the story on ongoing maintenance of those? Uh, we have a contractor that's responsible for doing that and uh, any time that we have an issue, we. Uh we contract him to uh, correct it. So. Okay, so if I, I'll, I'll contact that citizen if they have a concern about any of the particular light standards, um, we can contact your office. And, yes. Yep, yeah, good. And I think the other one and it's, uh, uh, is the, I know we had a large amount of water here over the last, uh, about a week ago, and there was quite a bit of flooding out on uh, Jarvis Road, Argyle Street. Where are we with the uh, testing and when will those results be coming back? Uh, currently, well, we complete an inflow infiltration study on, on the uh, system here, and we're currently monitor monitoring the flows with the uh, flow recorders, and uh, we're doing hydraulic modeling as well, so uh, we want to catch a, a major storm event, so I think we've probably have done that with this last storm, so we'll download all the data and uh, run it through the... Uh, computer model and uh, the report should be completed by the uh, mid uh, to latter part of November for uh, for uh, presentation to council. Okay, and I think your worship, I know I'd like to see that presented to council, but I think it's imperative for us sitting around the council table that we have a meeting with the residents and landowners on Argyle Street with a meeting totally dedicated towards the problem. Um, and I know this is going to be a start to the solution, what they're doing with the testing out there, but I think what we need to see is what the next steps are going to be because I know we have um, some money uh, with the uh, Build Canada Fund and I think that we have, um, uh, I think we're going to have the wherewithal around this table because I see Ralph's out here and I know he's going to probably, I'd like to see him voice a concern because I know uh, his, his son's had uh, major problems out there and I think um, I don't think there's any insurance out there anymore, is there, Ralph, or they're done? So I think we have to sit there with the landowners, um, the residents, and tell them what we're going to do with the next steps once this report comes in and have a meeting just totally dedicated to that. And I know Ralph probably might want to come up and just say a, a word or two about what happened uh, at his situation, but I know there's several more out there on our golf street, and I know you can't stop Mother Nature, but... Um, we have to do something for those guys out there in that, that neck of the woods. Plus, uh, there's a lot of developable land um, on the Argyle Street. We own a portion of that now. I talked to another gentleman that has uh, an interest uh, working with the town of Yarmouth to open up some of that stuff. So uh, the more that we can solve these problems, I think that test is going to be the first major step, and we have to do something. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh <clears throat> I had a conversation with the CAO yesterday, uh, Councillor Mooney, and uh, the conversation was what we're going to be talking about in camera, and there might be some, there might be some relief uh, if we go one or, one or two routes uh, we, we, we can look at when we get behind closed doors. So anyway, I'll keep it at that because it, it's an in-camera in -camera meeting, but my question is for uh, the engineer, Dave, I just want to... Uh, Thank you for uh, doing such a great job on Water Street with the, uh, the sidewalks, the curbing of them, how you made them bigger, much bigger. Great, great job. It looks really good. 
uh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you're, uh, that's, that's being done. It, it broadens it out more where we can, uh, where the people that are paraplegic or whatever are more capable and able to use them without having to shoot out into the road. Hopefully in, in your long-term planning, I know you didn't put the sidewalks there because I know they would have been done a different way. Hopefully in, in the, your long-term planning that the way that you made these ones will be all the way up and down on Water Street because it's a great job. It looks really nice. Well, that's the intent anyway. Well, that's great. And uh, thank you again. Uh, Go ahead. I, um, I think maybe, I know that the Winchesters are here, but maybe if we can schedule a meeting with uh, the residents as, as soon as possible with town staff, so it um, gives a chance for those guys to compile. Um, I know uh, Ralph's daughter-in-law wrote a nice, Right, a nice uh, succinct letter to the town of Yarmouth on, on what their problems were, but uh, maybe if we can cut, I know Dale Smith has a vested concern, I know his sister uh, Debbie Burke does, and I know there's uh, Vivian Kennedy and a number of other residents out there have a concern, but maybe if we can do it, Ralph, early next week, sit down with all town staff, uh, tell you where we're gonna go. I know the biggest part is gonna be that report that comes in that the testing they've been doing on Argyle Street, would that be would that be all right? I know, and just dedicated to that issue. Yeah, and and it's. I know it's not the Winchesters, but um, you guys are front and center because that house is right there on the corner, and that's the one that's. That's what you see the stuff come off of Jarvis Road, right? But if we can schedule a meeting, well, Your Worship. Okay, so so next week is is UNSM. Yeah, but we're and not other, going until. Okay, okay. The other question is, I'm going to ask the engineer. Do we need because we're so close to getting this report? Do we need to sit down and see where that report's going so we have at least have some information for these people? Like it. Well, I, I think I think it's it's a two way street because the first thing is you want the information from the residents of Argyle Street, and that'll go hand in hand along with what the report that we get. So we have a chance that, that like, uh, like Ralph said, there might be somebody at, uh, I'm just gonna pull a number out of my head at 152 Argyle Street that we've never heard from that just sucks it up and takes it, right? And they might come in and they say, you know, I've noticed this that happens when, in a big rainstorm, I never said anything. And, but there could be a thing that, that staff has, has a compilation of all the, all the complaints and all the concerns, and then they can match it up with the report when it comes. So it's, it's a two-part approach. So you do the first part, meet with the residents, and the second part, when the report comes, you try to match them up. Okay. That's fine, but I'd yeah. rather have the report first I, with I the recommendations. Me I mean, yeah. Okay, well. Yeah. It, it, would help. it won't be that much longer. Ralph, what do, what do you? I just, I, all I'm, I'm just saying, I understand what Councillor Mooney's saying. My thought is just that I, I don't want you to, I don't want you to have to come in and, and I'd like to, to be two way so that we can show you like what we have and, and what's on the table and, and what these reports are saying because I think there's some pretty comprehensive stuff in what you're, in what you're going to bring forward. Like those, all the studies, all the testings, everything. That's going to show a pretty clear picture. I hope so. I think yeah. it will. Yeah. Okay. All right, Councillor Langell, you're on. Thank you, Worship. Um, echoing Councillor Mooney's uh, sentiments exactly. I mean, we've been playing around with Argyle Street now going on six years, and plus many years before that, and uh, it's nice to know that we're getting somewhere. Uh, but I really think we need to giddy up and go in many cases, and I'm hoping this meeting will be sooner than later. Um, it is tragic when you see areas of this town can no longer get insurance especially for flooding, et cetera. That's a very scary thing because your home is your greatest equity position and suddenly 
you're now living in, in fear of a major rainstorm that's going to literally destroy that equity. And that's something that we as a council have got to take very seriously. And I really think we have to put a push on to this. I concur with the, with the engineer. Uh, however, in my history around this table, it sometimes takes longer than shorter to get some of these things. And I do hope that we can move on to this in a, a timely fashion. Um, so that's, I agree 100%. I've had more calls on Argyle Street water than any other issue in this, around this table. I must say, it's, it's, it, it tops the ferry because the people of Argyle Street really are frustrated. They've had an issue. We've had a public meeting here. We went on council uh, and went on record as a council that we were taking it as a priority. Um, we are doing something, which is gathering data, information reports, but when the Build Canada Fund comes, I still think that should be our major priority, that we've, we've sunk a lot of money into Stars Road and we've sunk a lot of money into other parts of town, but we haven't sunk very much into Yarmouth South other than a skateboard park. That being said, my question with the engineer is another concern I had. Um, for the last two years, Your Worship, I've been talking on the side to staff about concerns on Seminary Street. Um, Seminary Street has been a target of flooding. Uh, recently, last week, uh, we had in that storm another one. Um, in this case, a residence, uh, the water was so intense, I understand that the, the storm drain and his house broke and he ended up with a flooded basement, which is fine. Well, it's not fine for him, but that's the explanation. It was more of his fault than anyone's. The problem is there's a tremendous volume of water coming down Forest Street around, and that's draining into Seminary Street. If you turn right on Seminary to Forest, and I've taken staff down and showed them the pond that's in the ladies' backyard, there's almost a constant pond, I call it the swimming pool, which is uh, in her lawn, because that's where the water is accumulating. It's a very easy fix. It's just a matter of craftily directing the flow of the water to continue down that hill, because there's a little bit of oomph, and it goes into, like a moat, goes into Seminary Street. The other problem is that the storm, the storm sewer drain is very high in the road, so therefore the water literally has to be pretty well covering most people's lawns before the storm drain will actually collect the water. So I've kind of asked discreetly, hey, is something we can do? Can we help these people out? And uh, I did get an email today from a, a resident, David Gorman, who lives on the street now, and he uh, had $7,000 worth of damage in his basement in the last flood. And some of it, he admits, is because he had a broken drain that apparently the water came in. Um, is there any way that we can look at Seminary Street? I know it's not a, a priority, just to look to see if there's some way. Uh, to me, it's a matter of just simply directing that water so that it doesn't go down, that's coming off of um, the, the hill there. If we can just direct that water to go down Main Street, it would be nice, and we wouldn't have that inflow of water into Seminary. And that's... I don't know if we can do that or are staff looking at that at all. Dave, go. Can you answer that? I've, I've had the same thing with Grand Street. So there's streets all over. But That's the first I've made aware of Seminary Street, but we can have a look at it and see what the situation is. Probably the operations staff have been there, but I'm not aware of it. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. I had just one more question for Dave. Uh, Snow plowing on the sidewalks on Water Street. Is there anything in the uh, in the works for this winter for a snow snow plowing the sidewalks? Uh, I, the situation hasn't changed any from last year. I don't see how I can accommodate uh, snow plowing on Water Street. Is there isn't if there's some some of the sidewalks walking up and down Water Street like a lot of people do. It seems to me that they're, they're, uh, plow, the plow could go through there. I don't know. Maybe this, this plow might be too big, but there must, there must be some kind of device that can go through through there, the plow, plow the sidewalks, to make it you know, walkable. It's, it's, it's a great asset that we have. When, when, it, when it snows, we can't use it. I mean, I don't know what we need or what we have to get to, uh, to, to plow it, but I think it really should be plowed. It's a... It's a, a walk that everybody enjoys walking, but they can't walk it in the winter. Sometimes they have to walk in the road. It's just too dangerous. So, I mean, and there are businesses down there that, yes, they probably do shovel some of their, their, their sidewalks out, but, you know, I, I can't see why we can't find some sort of device. There must be something out there to be able to plow some of the sidewalks on Water Street. I'm not aware of uh, 
any device other than maybe a snowblower, a hand snowblower, but I mean, it's got to be something that's relatively easy to use and quick to use uh, rather than spend a lot of time just in Water Street plowing because we have a lot of 40-some-odd uh, kilometers of sidewalks in town. Uh, I, I, I understand that, but these, these, these two particular sidewalks, each side, are, they, they're still in the town of Yarmouth, and they're, they're, they're not being plowed, and I'm saying they're, I would think there must be a piece of equipment, and I know uh, there has to be something out there that can be adapted to plow that. If it's, you have to put something on a skid, sort of, to go over it so it doesn't hit the, I know it's not the ideal sidewalks on Water Street, they're not because of the brick and all the big humps and lumps that's on both sides. And I understand, I know where you're coming from. As I walk in, I, you know, you, sometimes you gotta be careful, you don't trip over some of the sidewalk, cause, cause you can, and, and they're, they're not designed well at all. But even if you take off the, some of the top surface, maybe three feet of it, and you only have to have walk in a foot of snow, or, or two feet of snow, wouldn't be half bad, but there must be some sort of device. Is there, is there a chance that you could perhaps look into something that's out there? There must be something in this world that can be adapted to, to, to be able to plow those sidewalks. I'm sure there's got to be something out there. Other than snow blowers, I don't know. I, I don't know what kind of equipment you have. The, the, the sidewalk plows, they don't appear to me to be that big, but then again, some of these sidewalks are not that wide because the way that it's, it's the, the landscape is with the trees and all the other stuff, so. Well, do, we do tried you want to it last year and it was a lot of frigging around and, and uh, took a uh, inordinate amount of time to plow. Okay. And it was very tight to do it, and that okay. was uh, with somebody guiding them. So, I mean, okay. it's not practical to use that piece of machinery. Okay. Well, you're the one that can say it. Okay. Good enough. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Councillor. Thank you, Worship. Um, further to that, uh, Water Street's always been an issue, and I agree with Councillor McIsaac, and as a walker, and we have a presentation coming up on healthy living and active lifestyles, to take a hunk of our infrastructure and put it out of service in the winter to me is a disservice to the residents. A question to the CAO, would, would not, uh, let's look at it from another perspective. Is it conceivable or is it plausible to look at this as a private enterprise? I mean, we're looking at from a staffing point of view, our public work staffs already, as, this, as the engineers commented, 42 kilometers of road to look after. Could we maybe put an RFP out to say, hey, how much would it cost on a regular basis to plow and let a, a private individual come in and plow that section because it's not looking at a major section and just see how much it would cost and explore it and therefore that would solve our problem and then people would be able to use that trail. CAO? Uh, we, can, we can look into that idea. Um, Thank you. Yeah, we can look into that idea. There, there oh. Let's just have a motion that staff be directed to look into getting Water Street plowed. Go ahead. Well, I can make a motion that uh, staff look into getting Water Street plowed, be it within existing staff or by an RFP process. Perfect. Can I have a seconder? Second. Moved and seconded. Any more discussion? <coughs> Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. That's relatively simple. Anything else for the, uh, go ahead, Councillor Dennis. Go ahead. Yes, Dave, I was just wondering how Green Street was coming along. We ran into rock on Green Street and we're pounding with a hammer right now, so. Okay. Maybe there's gold. Well, I wish there was, but. <laughs> and I was just wondering, you're replacing the storm drain there. Um, the other, there's other pipes that go through there as well. Have they been checked too? To make sure we're that replacing the water line. We're not replacing the sanitary line at this time, but so is the sanitary line good? Uh, it's not in the greatest of shape, but we had didn't have uh, a whole lot of money to spend in that street, so we we want to spend it on the uh, storm sewer to solve that problem. And the water line, of course, is uh, is uh, chargeable to the water utility, so. So, but the problem is though, if we do that and don't fix that pipe, then we'll pave it and then we'll have to dig it up again and repave it. Well, we're, we're gonna patch pave it for the time being. Okay, great, thank you. Go ahead. 
I thought we were off, maybe I'm wrong or I missed something here, but I thought we talked about this years ago that if we open a street, we're gonna try to replace what we can replace. Um, how much extra would that replace? I know it's probably too late now, but how much, I, I wasn't aware that we weren't replacing the, the household sewer. I thought everything was being replaced naively. So we're only doing the two items, but we're not yes. doing the third item. Yes. And I've had, I, and I wasn't aware of that, and I'm just curious. So how much extra would that have cost? Few hundred thousand. Yeah, but considering the amount of sewage issues we have in that area, it probably would have been money well spent. I can only stretch money to go so far. The exactly. Items that I wanted to get do this year included Hawthorne Street and uh, Green Street and a whole lot of other things. Which I understand that. I mean, I think that's 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 very commendable on your part, David. But my only thinking is, is if. I wasn't clear, I don't know if other members around the table were clear, I don't think Councillor Dennis was clear by her question, um, that we were only putting in a couple of pipes instead of all three pipes. And to me, you're gonna open the ground, you might as well do the, do the, do, do the deed and, and get it all done at once. And uh, I'm just wondering if maybe in the future, Worship, maybe when we're doing these projects, we could be looking at replacing everything. I mean, with the, if the hole is there, the pavement's been cut, you know, let's let's do a clean cut, especially if we've got aging infrastructure in the road, because uh, we seem to be. I just hate to see us. I agree with Councillor Dennis's point. I think it's something we really should be looking at. Okay, so before we finish with the engineer, Ralph, are you okay if we wait for the report, and that gives you extra time to, and and maybe we get word out to the residents in the area as well. So that, so that no one's missed, and, and then there's, there's answers for both sides, probably more productive for, for both of us. So that should be round about the end of November, Dave? Okay, because I, yes, I know uh, you're pretty <clears throat> close. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go, no, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I think I just <coughs> okay go ahead sorry engineer Actually, you're responsible for the sewer line from your house right up to the main sewer line <coughs> you with a permit you can night of the flood Thursday, Pam, I called you. Yep. I called the fire department mm -hmm. to get a hold of the town department. Mm -hmm. Yes. We had one town truck come out by, mm -hmm. never stopped, never got a call Friday, never had anybody come see us, hi, bye, or um, really bothers me. I called the CEO's office Monday, Tuesday, left my name and number asked for a phone call back, nothing. The last time we flooded, I took a day and I called the engineer's office. Must have been eight times. Left messages with his secretary that I wanted to see somebody on that property. Gave him 20 minutes, I called back again. So I jumped in my truck while the house was flooding <coughs> and we're trying to repair things. I drove around and I went to the town shed and that's where I found the engineer in there talking and we had some words but he knew I had called his secretary because he knew who I was at the time. I pay big taxes to this town of Yarmouth because of my business. My kids pay $4,000 a year to the town of Yarmouth. I would expect a phone call from a town employee. Okay, thank you, Ralph. Thanks. For the past month, I've been asking for the ditches to be dug on Jarvis Road, or at least checked or, you know, 
cleaned out a little bit, storm drains, you know, that kind of thing. On Thursday night, we had one of our friends that had to jump into the ditch and clear the grass. And he was up to his chest in water because none of the water would go through the storm drain. So obviously there's issues. And on Wednesday, I seen town workers clearing storm drains in Milton. So why can't they clear them on the drive road? Why can't it be made a fact when they know that there's rain coming to check the storm drains? I'm sure they do. It's not that hard. And really to drive down my road and see if they can dig the ditches or clear them out when there's heavy rainfall coming, it's kind of like common sense. But Thank you. And even still on Monday, they said that they weren't going to do it. So Are you Tara? Yeah. You got my letter. I'm yes. Sure no, it's did. nice to meet you face to face. Yeah. Thank you, Tara. So this is, um, I know this is no consolation, Ralph or, or, or Tara, but this is, I think, the closest we've ever been to a solution. It really is. I know it doesn't help for last week, but, you know, I'm just, that report should tell us. And it's not, you're absolutely right. It's not just about the Jarvis Road. It's about the whole region. And so that's the intent of, of all these reports and, and, um, and testings, that when we do it, we do it right, and it, and it impacts the biggest, biggest area. So it's important that we don't just, you know, focus on one, because it wouldn't fix anything. For sure. Yeah. 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 But the fall of 15, yeah. it's like dragging. Yeah. I yeah. Fix, yeah. Bang, yeah. 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 I understand that. But it still needs to be fixed. It, That's it, you know, regardless of how it blew up. Pastor Langell, you're on. Thank you, Worship. How many properties down there would be affected by flooding? Do you know? You're talking to your neighbors. How many do you know have suffered problems? Uh, the ones that are really talking, the ones that aren't being bullied or don't feel like they're being bullied because they're going to help us, probably eight or nine that have talked about it. Um, you know, there, there are more people there. Uh, I just, like, this has just been the last two years for my kids. You mentioned the word bullying. You're seeing that from who? Okay. okay, good. I just wanted to clarify that because I know. So you're you're saying there's eight or nine that you know of. They don't want to say anything. No, I, I understand. I, we all do. We all understand that. And 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 our engineer has j he's 
he's literally tapped into every testing, everything he can possibly do right now, and he's just waiting for, for that package so that we can take the next step. So. It's, no, no, not that part. No, not that part. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll be in touch. Um, Councillor Mooney added this to the agenda, but we're good. So you don't have to, don't feel like you have to stay if you don't. But I appreciate your guys' time. I don't mean to be rude or anything. It's just been going on too long. We're, I, I don't want to speak on behalf of Council, but I will. We, I don't think any of us are taking it as rude. It, not at all. Not at all. But, but both sides, but, but just so, just so we're being fair, both, but we're both trying to, you know, the engineer's doing everything. He, yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. CAO. Thank you, Worship. Um, I did, as everyone did receive uh, Tara's uh, long, detailed and, and frankly disturbing email um, you know it, and I did receive it and I did respond Tuesday evening to it um, it was difficult to find the right response because I, di I did forward the engineers um, comments which I hope gave you an idea of where we are in the process but I was frankly a little concerned that that just sending those details wasn't satisfactory to somebody who was obviously emotionally financially affected by by the situation it doesn't quite it isn't quite the response that I think I would want I think I'd want some understanding and so uh, I apologize Ralph for not getting back to you by phone I but I just if I if I might finish I knew what the issue was and I had the engineers response and I was looking for the words and I don't know that I came up with the right words frankly Tara to to address your concern other than to say we're we're working on it and we're going to make smart investments in our infrastructure and hopefully it will resolve resolve your issue and the other issues on the street um sorry good i had some email problems uh, earlier in the week and i didn't get that uh, my email was down for a day and a half could you send it to me again please because first i've heard about it is today and i would like to read it thank you very much okay Thank you, Dave. Finance department. Jerry, how we doing? Can you We're putting in a new accounting system, so that kind of sums it up. Uh, we've uh, made some progress. We're able to get some statements out for the uh, some of the units that we do the accounting for, uh, like the Mariner Center, waste park, waste check, that kind of thing. Uh, the town's still not to the point where I want to feed you the numbers. Just I, I know there's things that are in the wrong, just in the wrong spot. Um, we do continue to, to uh, verify and review some of our key accounts. Um, we know that, you know, revenues are in, in line with what we budgeted and that kind of thing, but just some of the details on the expenditures and some of the way the, the payroll's integrated with the system. We're still working out some, some, I guess, kinks with that, but just because it's the more complex unit that we do. But we're getting there. Good. Any questions for the finance officer? Economic Development Report. Miss Natalie, welcome. Questions? 
questions? <laughs> now, I will say this, not a question, but, but you're both feet on the ground running. I, I know, um, I don't want to say in a hundred different directions, I, I would say you're going at a hundred different things in one direction, and that's exactly what this town needs, just to keep going straight ahead and um, tap into everything we need to keep us going forward. So I, in the community, I get a lot of reports, I'll, I'll say it. <laughs> don't, want to, don't want to embarrass you, but I get a lot of reports uh, about you meeting with people and the positive experience, and so thank you for that. Are you having fun yet? Every day. Good. Good. Councillor Mooney? And Your Worship, I don't know if it's a question to Natalie or a question to the CAO, but I see that the Premier did a famous John Buchanan the other day and announced money that's already been announced for $52 million for housing. Um, I saw that. Is there any way that we can tap into any of that funding? Is that a next? Because that's the old, uh, that's the old John Buchanan School of uh, Political Announcements. There's a pot of money there that we know is there that's been sitting there for two or three years that they haven't done anything with. Then they make an announcement that they're putting 52 million new dollars into housing, which the money's been there for three years that they've never done anything with. Yeah. So I have a call in to, to sit down with Mrs. Bernard about that, about yeah. the minister. So I'm just waiting. I'm there tomorrow. But so I think, yeah, and I think, we yeah. Okay, and, and I think when you talk to the minister, I think we have to come back in this community and talk to developers and, yeah. and the people that are in the, uh, the housing business that have housing stock to come in Absolutely. because you, you see what we have for, for property uh -huh. around the town of Yarmouth. And I think if, if there's a chance to uh, invest in this and where we have to come in with some equity, I think uh, a piece of property that's, you know, a 15, 20, 25,000 or 30,000 dollar lot um, is a great percentage of a, of a house, you know. so. Um, if we can tap into that and we can use our economic development officer for that, that's creating jobs and keeping money in our local community. So um, if you can emphasize that to the minister, it would be greatly appreciated and see what we can do as a community for our next steps because um, if I know the Kathleen Donchamont Mooney at the Tri-County Women's Centre, uh, they have a group down there for affordable housing. So if we can talk to any interested group or vendor, um, I think it's an opportunity because there is $52 million there, and I would like to see a portion of that here in Yarmouth Town. Absolutely. Councillor Mangel? This is not a new issue, and I agree with Councillor Mooney. In fact, we discussed at this table a couple of years ago. Um, it obviously didn't get very far, but um, the, the issue is, and I'm glad you're worship your meeting with the minister, which is fine. That's political, but I'm looking at the bureaucracy. You've got a $52 million project of money that's already there. Um, I do hope it's our intent as a town to go after that money and that we're not going to be assigning it to another group or agency to go after this money. I mean, I'd like to see us, I mean, we need proper housing in this community for some of our residents. We have some people living in some pretty dire straits. Um, and this is a good opportunity, a good economic growth, and I'm, I think it's something that Natalie has to be majorly involved in, and if not, the council. So I do hope in the discussions tomorrow, it's not only a lobbying for our money, I don't have a discussion tomorrow. I, no. said, I said I called. I'm just waiting. Oh, you have a call in, yeah. so there's no... Just, no, not... Okay. I'll, I'll let you know when that is. Yeah, well, Nani, it would be interesting, because I really think we need to push for this as much as possible, because it's areas, and we have got so much property that we own as a town. It's be a perfect partnership. Good? Sorry, you have... Because I can't see your light. Go ahead. One of the, one of the things that we did... Um, I'm going to say eight years ago, approximately eight years ago, as we had the folks from housing come down and meet in this room with developers. And at that time, the developers, uh, there was one group that looked into, into taking advantage of the, um, of the program for, for affordable housing uh, in their development. The development never went forward. So, um, but now is a different time. We are talking to developers on a regular basis. So I think it might be one idea to, to invite them down to specifically invite the developers in, hear the presentation, because there really is, to my knowledge, nothing in, in, the, in that $54 million that we can access directly ourselves. It has to be through, through developers, with developers in, in partnership. Uh, they're not doing the, the, old, the old program, which I, which I kind of like, the idea is, is helping people get into single-family dwellings or even semi-detached that they actually ev eventually own. 
and I know the town used to put land into those deals from time to time to make them happen. That program, I don't believe, is part of the 54 million. I think that's, that's gone. They're more into working with developers, contributing, I think it's $25,000 per unit, provided that so many units within the development are, are affordable, house, affordable housing, meaning that the rent is capped for a period of time at a certain level. Anyway, we, that's one idea is that we could, we could entertain that kind of an open house here. Go ahead. I think the CAO hit the nail on the head. I think says what we really need is to bring them down and to, to actually orchestrate this and it's something maybe Natalie and the CAO could work on. I'd like to make a motion the staff be directed to uh, approach the necessary agencies involved with the affording affordable housing to invite them to Yarmouth for a presentation to council and to developers in the area who may be interested in taking part in their activities. Moved and seconded. Any more discussion? Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Anything for Natalie? Good? Thanks. Yarmouth Recreation. Welcome, Frank. And Maura? Thank you for having us today and we're going to give a short presentation on our uh, physical activity strategy. Um, Maura Carter is our active living coordinator and she's been with us uh, just a little over a year and a half now and has been working on our physical activity strategy as part of the Municipal Physical Activity Leadership Program. And uh, I'll turn things over to Maura and she'll give you an update and an overview of our strategy. I'm just trying to find our presentation on here. No. Uh, it's 2013. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. No, that's okay. Any questions for for uh, Frank in the meantime? Our our committee meeting is on Wednesday, and it looks like we will have a quorum. Um, just while we're waiting, I guess a couple of things. Uh, November the 14th is the 38th annual Yarmouth County Athletic Awards banquet, and. Uh, It'll be uh, hosted again out in Tuscat at Ecole Secondaire de Paramba. It's a tri-municipal tri event that we've been doing for 38 years now, and over 300 athletes and coaches and volunteers will be awarded on November the 14th. Um, another big date is November the 21st. Right here is our uh, uh, Christmas tree lighting ceremony. When's that? We'll, on the 21st of November. And... Uh, we always have the tree lighting the Friday evening before the, the parade, and the parade is on Saturday the 22nd. There's also a sports fair coming up on November 29th. This will be open to children. It's a great opportunity to try new sports, no cost. Uh, we'll have some refreshments, some snacks for the kids, prizes to give out and many local coaches will be there so it's a great opportunity for parents and uh, their children to meet the coaches face to face. What have you got here that's easy? There we go. Oh, no. It was a PowerPoint. No. That's okay. I'll wing it. Oh, I guess I'll tell you when to switch. <laughs> Old fashioned. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And again, sorry for the delay. Um, I'm very excited to be presenting the physical activity strategy to you today. 
Uh, it's been a, a lot of work from a lot of people that I would first like to start off with by acknowledging. Uh, the strategy is a result of many individuals coming together, many individuals with different backgrounds and different experiences collaborating, which has enriched this document, in which the same for implementation. The more departments and organizations we have working together to implement it, the more successful it will be. So I do want to take a second to acknowledge everyone who's contributed so much time to help me develop this strategy. Um, starting with Debbie Smith, Department of Health and Wellness, Frank Grant and Misty James from Yarmouth Recreation, Denise Vacon, Public Health, Maurice Sigfordson, Education, Nicole Kinney, Sport Nova Scotia, Tracy Burgess, Heart and Stroke Foundation, Justin Dontremont, YMCA, Jeff Cashew, Town of Yarmouth CAO, and Phil Mooney, Town of Yarmouth Councillor, and Rick Churchill, um, Councillor for the Municipality of the District. I'd also like to say that this strategy has currently been approved by both the Department of Health and Wellness and Municipality of the District of Yarmouth, and it is supported by the Yarmouth uh, Recreation Committee. So, starting off, this strategy is a five-year document, the first year for um, development and the next three years for implementation. The fifth year is for evaluation and for implementation of final action items that are still left to be carried out and ongoing ones that take longer than uh, just one year. Um, our vision, I guess I'll go with this. So the vision of the committee, we came together to work on this. The town and municipality of Yarmouth, physical activity is a long-term lifestyle valued and enjoyed by the population as a whole at an individual, social, environmental, and policy level. It, we want it to be a comprehensive strategy that is going to hit every level so no one's left out. Uh, being physically active comes both naturally and easily regardless of a person's age, gender, ability, or socioeconomic status. And our mission is to support, enable, and advocate physical, physically active lifestyles for all residents in the town and municipality of Yarmouth through policies, programs, education, and environments, both natural and physical environments. The group came together, and when we came up with our action items, we had some guiding principles that we followed throughout the complete development of this uh, strategy to ensure that it's comprehensive, effective, and that it relates to the community. This strategy is developed strictly for the town and the municipality of Yarmouth to meet unique needs that we may have. Um, the idea of the guiding principles is that it's a whole of government approach. It's built on assets that we already have, opposed to trying to reinvent the wheel. And that it's also evidence-based, meaning that we are sticking to best practices and staying on top of research. Uh, of course, we want it to be sustainable, inclusive, uh, strive for equality throughout the strategy, and one, like I said, strengthening on uh, partnerships, community partnerships, municipal government, and uh, local champions. So, we have five overarching goals for this strategy. Three of them have been um, dictated by the province of Nova Scotia. So these three strat or, uh, goals are going on throughout the province. They're consistent. The three are that we increase physical activity for youth, we increase physical activity for females across the lifespan, and that we uh, increase active transportation. We have two more overarching goals, and these goals they came out of the public feedback that we collected. They emerged on their own and they were so obvious that they became unavoidable and we felt there was a strong need for them. Those are to raise awareness of, physical, of the physical activity strategy, physical activity opportunities, and the benefits related to physical activity. And the last one is to increase opportunities for people in rural areas to be physically active. Uh, just a quick refresh on how we collected all the data that came together to develop this strategy. We started with an online survey, had over 150 people respond, and there was some great feedback in there. We really got some rich feedback from the community. Uh, lots of ideas, suggestions, comments, concerns, praise, 
So we used that. We shifted through that data. I also held six public meetings, one in the town and five in the municipality. And I also met with people one-on-one, -on -one, um, people from organizations that work with physical activity or sports in the town, um, various act, um, organizations that we thought we could link up with. All of this data was then put together and the committee, we shifted through the data, we divided it into our goals, and then once we had all of the different action items for each goal, we separated those into if they were a policy piece, environmental, social, or individual, to ensure that we were fulfilling our um, need to be comprehensive. So, touching a little bit on the social ecological model that we followed to develop this, um, it was important for us to have, make sure that we had policy pieces to uh, strengthen it. So, some examples of policy pieces, one that's already in place is just, for example, our day camps now have a policy that they spend so much time outside to get more physical activity. Uh, the next step was environment. So this is natural and built spaces, for example, sidewalks, access to facilities, distance to parks, green space. Um, one example being the Clemens Trail that, and the Broadbrook Trail that uh, the town has worked on so well. Also, physical environment um, and adaptive equipment that's come to committee that's come together to bring ice hockey sledges for people with physical disabilities so they can access the ice at the Mariner's Center. Uh, social environments, this can be perceived support from family, friends, work, welcoming environments, and quality leadership. One example that we uh, just completed was a women's 40 and up biking group. Um, so we brought them all together in one, for one day for a workshop, and it was females only, and we brought in very talented leadership to guide the group, gave them the social connections to stick together so they could stay intact for their uh, future rides, and they now have a social network and they are operating on their own. And finally, the last piece of the social ecological model that we're using is the individual level. So this can be one's self-confidence, one's skills, or um, it can be gender, age, your income, motivation, or ability level. It's very important to address that. Uh, so like I mentioned earlier, we have the sports fair, which will individually give the kids some of the skills to play specific sports. An equipment swap that we did last year and we'll be doing again this year will meet perhaps some of the financial barriers to physical activity so they can have equipment to play in the games. Another individual one that we have already started is the After the Bell program that we do at Maple Grove School just for girls and that gives them some confidence and some skills to participate in a wide variety of activities. So this is what we considered when we were setting our action items for the strategy. So I'd like to talk briefly about um, each of our goal areas, the first one being youth. Like I've mentioned, this is a provincial priority, uh, particularly because 7% of the youth in Canada are meeting the 60 minutes a day of moderate, vigorous physical activity. So it's becoming an alarming trend, the physical inactivity rates in this country, in this province, and I'm sure in this town and municipality as well. So what we'd like to do is um, give youth the skills to become leaders. So a lot of the action items that we have for you, we want them to be youth-led, much like the skateboard park, the success that you, from uh, the feedback that they gave. So I'm gonna be working in both schools, the um, junior high and the high school, with youth to uh, work on their leadership skills, educate them how to get stuff going. Uh, we want to support the development of healthy physical literacy, so giving children the ability to participate in a wide variety of activities, uh, recreational and sport, increase youth engagement, make it easier for youth to try new activities, strengthen the relationship with the school board, incorporate physical activity into existing organizations, which I think is very important, ones that may not even come to mind, Organizations that work with you, for example, uh, Girl Guides, we could work with them, we'll plan to work with them to see how we can get physical activity on their, on their radar. Um, a big one, increased cycling opportunities. You'll note in here, there'll be lots of bike rodeos coming up to give them lifelong skills to participate in active transportation. Uh, there is a lot of feedback from the community that there aren't enough non-competitive opportunities, so there'll be a lot of non-competitive opportunities coming up for the age group 18 to 13. We also want to motivate parents to be physically active. 
so they can be role models. You'll see in here there's um, a piece on developing a grant program for adults to apply for. So they, similar to our Jumpstart and Kids Sport program, so if they financially can't support themselves to be active, they'll have an opportunity to apply for funding to do so. So we want to develop a lot of unstructured um, opportunities for youth and give them the skills to do that on their own and set them up with them. Uh, so now I will talk a little bit about females across the lifespan. Once again, this is a provincial goal. Um, particularly because alongside adolescents, there is a huge drop-off in females' physical activity rates. So a lot of the action items that you'll find in this strategy are targeting that age group and addressing that drop to prevent it. Um, many action items will are aimed to improve confidence, to give them skills, make sure environments are welcoming, that. Um, they also suit the needs of busy schedules as well. That came up a lot in our public feedback that uh, there wasn't enough time with childcare and et cetera. So for example, a 10 minute physical activity campaign or workplace wellness campaigns, ones that help with the time limit. Um, also we want to increase the opportunity and support female leadership. We want to um, recognize the importance of equality across many organizations, many sports, um, make them aware of these statistical differences and how they can help. Also, for example, you'll notice our athletic banquet that's coming up in a couple weeks. We will be having equal major award winners for females and males this year so to support and encourage our athletes. Um, Next off, we have active transportation. There are many benefits to active transportation, economic, health benefits, environmental benefits, and this is partly why it's been chosen as a provincial goal as well. Um, the, in this strategy, we aim to increase the number of leaders in active transportation, increase the number of people who bike and skateboard safely, increase the number of people who use active transportation regularly, increase the number of students who use active transportation to and from school, improve awareness of trails and safe places, make active trans transportation social, uh, support developments in the town and municipality related to active transportation and education pieces. And a lot of the work too will support the Yarmouth County Active Transportation Committee that has to do with policy making around uh, promoting active transportation and enabling people to use it more. Um, what we want to see in the long run is walking and biking to become a norm in the town, that it will come automatically to people, and by doing this we hope to give them the skills, the education for both pedestrians and drivers, and safe environments to do so. Uh, the fourth goal, and this is one that we came up with, it wasn't a provincial goal, it's one that we found, thought was very important by looking at the feedback, and this is community awareness. Uh, this is on a, an umbrella for a couple things. One is awareness of this actual strategy, awareness of the benefits of physical activity, awareness of opportunities that we have in the town and the municipality. Um, its aim is to change the mindset towards physical activity and look at physical activity as a tool and provide people with the uh, knowledge of how and when and where to do these things. Uh, the thing about physical activity is that it's a controllable determinant of our health and we really want to emphasize that and sell that to the public so they see it as something that they can change. And the last goal in the strategy uh, is rural communities. There was a lot of feedback about how people don't always have the means or the ability to travel into the town for certain activities. So we thought it was very important to uh, educate people of how they can do so in their own rural community in their backyard. Uh, so the goal is to increase opportunities for people in rural areas to be physically active and increase awareness of existing opportunities. Now how we want to look at this is to encourage people to utilize the resources they have in their community. Use the beaches, the green space, the school sports fields that they have in their backyard and encourage unstructured play, unstructured family activities within those spaces. So we really want to promote that. Um, also, we want to uh, support and encourage local community champions in each area to start <coughs> programming to address the needs of um, community members 
and give them the tools and the support to get that started, maximize the use of community halls. Uh, so that's it for rural communities. It's much more in depth in the actual strategy. So now I just want to leave off with um, a little bit touch on evaluation. Uh, this each year after the year is completed, we'll look back on each objective and action item and we'll see what's been met, what is working and what needs improvement. After the last year, year five is for evaluation and remaining time to work on strategy action items that take longer than that set time frame and for them to shift into year five. Um, as new opportunities arise, for example, a new grant opportunity comes, we will be uh, incorporating them into the strategy as we see fit to make sure that we're maximizing everything possible. Uh, many items can't be quantified. However, many things we can see visible results. We can see people coming out and participating, and we can hear what public feedback from each of these things. Uh, so at this point, I would ask that uh, the Fiscal Activity Strategic Plan be accepted and approved and supported, of course, by uh, the Town Council. And uh, I would welcome any questions. First, I'll make a motion we accept the plan as presented. Moved and seconded. Any more discussion? Question. Question's been called. All oh. oh, sorry, you have a question. I thought you were calling for the question, but you can't do. I can't do. Just checking. Has the, uh, has the strategy been endorsed by the committee, by the Recreation Committee? Yes. Okay. And the municipality. The municipality so. already. Yep, the municipality, yeah. Yarmouth Recreation, and the Department of Health and Wellness. Yeah. Good. Anybody, any more questions? Councillor McIsaac? Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> Just a quick question on the, your survey. Uh, I did fill it out once or twice, and there were some problems with it at, at first. I think it was, you had uh, overwhelming uh, participation on the, uh, on the line itself. A lot of people was really putting in a lot of information, and, and it the website fell down or something, whatever, however you call it, but. We had to extend it. Um, to be honest, when we started the online survey, we had no idea what we would get for feedback. We got a lot of feedback from people, which is great. It's it fabulous. was a great survey. It really was. Pardon? It was a great survey, oh, the questions uh, and answers. The feedback yeah. we got, because there yeah. were some open-ended questions, and I know some people cringe when they see an open-ended question on a survey, but people really took their time to fill it out. So what had happened was, the number was set for 150 respondents and yeah. then it maxed out. Yeah. We tried to quickly as we could so we wouldn't miss respondents, yeah. reload it, an yeah. identical one with a different link. Another question, uh, you've been with us for how long now? A uh, year and a half. How do you find your job? Great. Great, you like it? I do. It's, uh, there are a lot of different things about it, many different projects on the go, so it's great. Lots of. Uh, and I'll just to say one more thing, and it's uh, the conference this week, last week, was a great conference. And if uh, things go that the way we hope they go, as far as recreation, Nova Scotia, or whatever, it, it looks it looks pretty interesting and uh, pretty good. And uh, I'm looking to see the, the booths at the UNSM at the conference there. I got your email. We'll be we'll be looking for them. But it was a great confer conference and uh, great technology that was there. The uh, push button one for voting on these different uh, different things that you want to be had in Nova Scotia as far as recreation that goes. And you'll be bringing that to the committee uh, next week. Frank, what did you think of the conference? Uh, that definitely, uh, when we went over the, the national recreation policy, uh, just to inform council what Councillor McIsaac's referring to is we went through a number of uh, 30 some odd points of the national recreation policy and we all had uh, individual uh, remote uh, counters to basically vote on what we seemed uh, as priorities. So it was a quick visual as soon as everyone made their vote then you could see it on the screen right away and it gave the uh, the uh, consulting firm that's putting that information together a lot of information on where we stand as a province with recreation so uh, would it be fair to say that the committee members sitting around the table will serve notice to the CEO and the financial advisor that we'll be looking for more funding come for next year more funding more funding is always good yeah okay Thanks, as long as it's justified, right? That's right. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> okay, so motion on the floor. Any, any further discussion? Questions been called. All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. You've got your strategic plan ratified by us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Alrighty, let's see what we got here. Okay. Bus business uh, rising, minimum housing standards bylaw, CAO. Go ahead. Thank you, Worship. Uh, there were some questions about the, uh, the recommended changes to the bylaw. I've arranged for a building inspector to be present to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Laura so Lee. I, I, Laura Lee. I, for some reason, I thought it was Councillor Dawes that needed that information. Can we, do you want to just leave this for the council meeting or? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Councillor. I, I, we, should, we should, Your Worship, uh, probably refer this to the next council meeting uh, when Councillor Dawes is, will be present. She could ask perhaps those same questions. And perhaps if she has the questions she wants to ask, if it, she could write them down and ask beforehand, or do we have to have the, the, uh, the employee here? Good, thank you. Councillor Lando? That was my question, yeah. Oh, I thought you. Oh, sorry. Well, I guess for for clarity, if nobody else at the table has questions, perhaps a one on one would would suffice. And so, uh, Councillor Dawes can arrange an appointment through Judy uh, Rabichot to uh, have an appointment with Laura Lee and ask her questions, get her answers. And so, we'll put uh, second reading of the bylaw back on the agenda for the November council meeting, and we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Councillor Landon, did you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, we got a note, I think, today from Martha Cassidy. Uh, her concerns, uh, I believe it's concerning this whole issue again, the two exits from the building. Yeah. Um, is it possible that that could be shipped off to Laura Lee? I'd like to get her comments on those as well. If she could respond, uh, Mrs. Cassidy does have concern about the double exits and the store standards and all that good stuff. And I'd appreciate it if you look at her email and maybe address it to us. Yeah, it was sent to, no, you didn't rate. No, it went to uh, every, all the bureaucrats, all the politicians, but bureaucrats didn't get it. So, uh, so I'll, I'll, ship it off, I'll ship it off to you and then you can ship it off to her because I don't have her yeah. email address. And, and then Lorelai, maybe you can 10 respond to all of morning. us. 1058 this morning, she sent it. And yeah. she does raise some issues, so we'll, and maybe the planner can get a copy for her files as well. Thank you. Good, thank you. Any questions for Lorelai? Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Facade program permits. CAO. Thank you, Worship. The uh, the facade program uh, that Natalie's been working hard on with the community. Uh, a question arose as to whether or not the council would. Uh, would uh, absorb any building permit fees that could arise from the program. So uh, based on our, our current fee schedule, you're looking at as much as the maximum uh, that, that a building permit could cost for $10,000 worth of work on a commercial building based on our formula is $100. Chances are most of the work that would be done doesn't require a permit. Painting doesn't require a permit. Uh, uh, a, a new sign does not require a building <coughs> permit. Excuse so uh, what I'm asking is for council to agree to, by motion, to uh, set aside the fees for building permits for the facade program up to $100 per applicant. Moved and seconded. Any more discussion? Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Business request for decision civic addressing bylaw administration. Yep. Go ahead, CAO. Your Worship, uh, what we're asking for is for our GIS technician to be uh, made or, or named an administrator of the civic addressing bylaw. Currently, the bylaw enforcement officer, Joanne Earl, is. Uh, we would like to add Tracy Bruce, the GIS technician, as well, as she works on civic addressing, and it would be convenient if she had the authority. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. 
Request for decision sandwich board sign. CAO. Thank you, Worship. Council has the authority to, to grant this permission. What we're talking about is a sandwich board sign, so it's a non-permanent sign that uh, the, um, the uh, tenant at 603 Main Street would like to have uh, set out uh, along Elm Street, uh, and it is actually in front of the, the walking trail right-of-way. And because it is a public right-of-way, Council has the authority to be able to grant that permission. Uh, I can tell you that I've, I've seen uh, where he's been putting the sign. It doesn't create a problem for, uh, for the trail, and it doesn't create a problem for the use of the right-of-way in any way. And so on the condition that it doesn't uh, obstruct the trail or the street, uh, I would recommend, as the planner has, that the permission be granted. Seconded. Any more discussion? You good? Yeah. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary. Motion carried. Request for decision remembrance day policy statement. Your okay. Worship, this came up at the last council meeting that this kind of decision we make every year, we make the same decision. And so this policy statement is just intended to follow through with that in future years without having to put it back on your agenda until such time as the council would decide to make some other decision, either to add something to this or take it away. It will continue and, we'll, and staff will continue to order the reads and, and uh, deal with the Mariner Center. Moved and seconded. Questions been called. Any discussion now? Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Brush and branch pickup. Oh, I like that one. CAO. Your Worship, uh, Council requested after the, uh, the events of July this year that uh, staff uh, review the possibility of doing a small brush and, and tree limb pickup at least once a year, ideally in the spring in the town's engineer, town engineer's uh, report uh, or brief memo. Uh, concerning this is attached and he is uh, he is recommending or advising that we can in fact do that uh, provided that there is some some restriction he's recommended a restriction in terms of quantities good councillor Mooney I got a, not a question on that because I think it's a great idea it's something that the citizens deserve but uh, I had a question yesterday I was at a public uh, public event and they had a problem that a tree blew down from an adjacent property on Kemp Street and the property is uh, next to the ball field and he contacted leisure services and they said that Harold he talked to Harold Power who mows it for leisure or for probably Yarmouth Recreation or Yarmouth Leisure Services Harold says I take care of uh, I take care of mowing the grass only and this resident was concerned that the tree came down he took care of it piled it up and they said you have to contact the landowner so he contacted the Episcopal Corporation of Yarmouth in Halifax and they said we leased the ball field back to whoever and they're responsible for whatever's on the on uh, on the property so um, I know the tree I think is still there so I just wonder where the citizen goes with that CAO. he was going to call the Pope yeah. but I don't know if the Pope was available that for was, this that one. That was my answer. <laughs> no. Uh, if, if, the, uh, if the tree was actually on the land that is leased to the town for the Kemp Street ball field, uh, that property is under the control of Yarmouth Recreation, and so they should deal with the tree. Can we make a note of that and maybe double-check that on the Kemp Street property, see if it's still there? He said it was. Yeah, sure. It's still there? Okay make a motion that we that we confirm the, the presence of the tree and that we refer to recreation and we'll do that i'll make that so a motion okay. yeah moved and seconded any more discussion question question has been called all those in favor aye, aye. contrary motion no, carried right? councillor langell go ahead uh, somewhat um mathematically challenged how much is 2.5 cubic meters how big are, are we looking at that desk you're sitting at that's cubic yards. Cubic yards. yards. So is that your desk you're sitting at? Uh, cubic yard is, is uh, three by three by three, so. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. six. I'm just trying to get a visual six idea. And a half, seven and a half feet long by three by three. That's, that's okay. 
Yes. It's a good size one. Just wanted to make sure. Good. I'm just curious about how big that was. Yes. Okay, good. Are we, uh, so if somebody goes over slightly, is that, and we're not going to be able with measuring tapes, I trust. Are we like waste check? No, but I mean, if they want to get ridiculous. And <laughs> Well, it's, it's going to be important, too, that we get the word out and that we say, here are your dates, here's the size, and be, uh, because people will put it out for weeks after. I know. We'll advertise it in our uh, yeah. collection schedule. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so we're looking for a motion. What's the motion? Go ahead. Just the other question, Dave. I noticed you have brush and small tree limbs. Um, Spring cleanup notoriously has an awful lot of leaves. Um, I know when we do the cleanup every year, a phenomenal amount of, of leaves and sometimes garden waste. Uh, that this does not apply, that would be a waste check pickup stuff? Uh, no, it's got nothing to do with waste check. They can put that out in bags with their uh, green card. Okay, good. And maybe a question for Councillor Dennis or Councillor Mooney. I see Councillor Mooney's left to probably sell a membership. Um, the, uh, oh good. Um, is there any danger that waste check, like in some areas, uh, waste pickup has been restricted to numbers of bags? Has there been any conversation at waste check to restrict residents for the numbers of bags? My question is that in some areas, uh, groups like Waste Check have been restricting the amount of compost bags that can be put out, especially for leaves and cleaning. Has there been any discussion in Yarmouth about doing that same? Because what I hate to see is some property owners who have a lot of leaves wouldn't be able to deal with them in a, a proper timely fashion in the spring because there is a fair amount of garden waste and residuals in the spring that people will have. Right now this policy is looking only at a shrub, a bushes, and, and limbs. We're not looking at leaves, okay. and I'm just curious where we stand with that. So, so Councillor Mooney's on waste check. Are we, are we looking at limiting the amount of bags that people can put out Has with been, leaves? No. Okay. Good? You good? Your Worship, Go uh, waste, waste check does not set the limits on blue bags, green carts, or other garbage that you can put out. That is all subject to uh, bylaws in each individual municipality. And uh, there, there are cases within the waste check region where specific municipalities or towns have limits on the number of blue bags, for instance, you can put out. I know our guy used to have bag limits and I, I lobbied hard against that because you know, with seven people in my household being given the same limit as, as a single person living alone just doesn't make any sense. And at the end of the day, diversion is what's important as opposed to the overall volume. So uh, we, we're safe. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to approve the engineer's, uh, Linda, you good? Okay, all right, any further discussion? Question's been called, all those in favor? Aye, contrary, motion carry, trucking of bulk highway salt. Your Worship, this is our annual process of uh, tendering for the, uh, the delivery of uh, of bulk salt and uh, the engineer's uh, report is attached and he's recommending that the council accept the lowest bid uh, which is from GK Morse Limited at $39.95 per ton plus HST uh, for delivery during normal work hours for an estimated contract of $59,925 plus HST and that is for your consideration and if you are so inclined uh, I would ask that you consider a special council meeting at the end of this meeting in order to ratify uh, any decisions on tenders. Moved and seconded. Any more discussion? Yep, go ahead. Can I have your light? That's okay. Go uh, ahead, Deputy. Jeff, um, G.K. Morris, are they local or not? That does all, that's all I was wondering. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Dennis. I was, I was just wondering, well, I don't know if it's up to me to ask this question, but um, w we always want to try to do things for local companies, so, you know, to provide more employment and everything, but it always seems like when we put out a tender that our companies here are always much higher than companies out of town. 
and like this particular one, what, how is it cheaper to bring from Berwick or Centerville uh, salt compared to uh, one here in Yarmouth? I just don't understand. Go ahead, CAO. Um, one thought on that is the extra six cents a liter we pay for fuel. Right? Uh, I don't know how big a factor that is. I don't know why the price is higher. I don't know if Dave has any insight into that. Uh, GK Morse, I assume, is a fairly large outfit. Uh, yes, they are. That's they do a lot of trucking through the province as well. And I, I don't know if they have any backhaul possibilities that they do that allows them to keep the price down. Don't know. They are very competitive. They get this tender every year. Good. Okay. Did that motion go through? Question. Question's been called. Yep, it was moved. Yep. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Uh, heat recovery project update. CAO? Thank you, Worship. I'm waiting for my file to come up, which doesn't appear that it's going to. That helps a lot. Thank you. So the heat recovery project at Mariner Center, uh, it is kind of a, I guess, a, a new technology, and as they've looked into it further, the costs have, have climbed, uh, but we are still recommending that we proceed. However, we need an additional allocation of $60,000 in order to pick up our share of the capital cost, and uh, so we're asking for that. The expected net savings uh, annually for completing the project is $75,000 a year in the operating budget. So. Uh, that is for your consideration. Councillor Landro. Thank you, Worship. I've seen this one. Um, on the surface, I'm quite supportive, but also there's a yellow light going off. We've had a lot of projects from the Mariner Center over the past number of years that are going to pay itself back. We've never really had an accounting of those projects. Uh, I remember vaguely in this room us putting a fair chunk of change into so-called convention equipment and uh, tables and that we were gonna make a, we were gonna make that back in three or four years and uh, then we did this big television sign that was gonna pay for itself in three or four years. Is there any way we can get an accounting of all these projects and where we are financially with them because uh, here we have another one this is gonna pay itself back in seven years uh, supposedly. Um, I'm not saying there's any impropriety or anything I'm just curious how the other ones are doing because uh, we've put a lot of change into the Mariner Center over the last years. I mean, that is a huge, I think I calculated once for the previous council, a little over, if you count all the infrastructure improvements like sewer and et cetera, et cetera, it's in the millions that have gone into that facility. And I'm just wondering what the payback is. And from what I'm seeing on the balance sheets, there's not a lot of revenue coming in there. And I'm, I'm wondering where we are there on that. Okay, CAO? Uh, we, can, we can put together a report for you on capital costs versus projected revenues and actual revenues. Do you want a motion for that? Yeah, please. Wait one sec, Wait, go ahead. Thank you, I'd like to make a motion that staff be directed to work with the Mariner Center staff to prepare an accountability report of various projects over the past five years with the amount of revenues, uh, revenues and expenditures and uh, the amount of return on investment. Good, so moved. Oh, there are? Okay, all right. So let's take care of this one first. Councillor McIsaac, did you? Yes, hear I, yeah, pertaining I do. Pertaining to yeah. the first one. My, okay. mine, mine to the first one, as always is. Uh, I, I read this over. Uh, th is this something new and different, other than the heat and recovery we were looking to get before? Is this something new that they that they came up with? And the only thing new is the cost. So uh, what they did is they, they, when they started to get into this, there, are, there were two, two companies that were proposing different technologies in order to achieve the same end. Mm -hmm. So they had a consultant uh, who, who was quite knowledgeable go and investigate <coughs> the two technologies, recommend which one to go with. They tendered the, the project, did, did the RFP, and they got the pricing back, and the pricing is higher than what the budget <coughs> allows. So this is just coming back to get the money approved to go ahead and proceed because it, it came in over budget. So we, our, our portion of it is, the town's portion is how much? Well, the, the total project. Mm -hmm. is, 
what was 400,000? Right, so now the project is 510, so our, our total uh, that we're being asked for is 255. I've added 5,000 on to our, our request here, just out of a uh, you know, mix of- uh, Ours is 255? Our, ours would be 260. 260,000. <coughs> now, my next question will be, do we have the money, and your answer is gonna be yes, but where are we taking the money from, and does this impede any other work that we see that's coming down the road, i.e. Agarl Street, any other things like that. I mean, it's one thing, I know it's very important. I, I'm for the project, I, I truly am. But $255,000. So the answer is, is that the 200 has already been allocated. Okay, it's, it's an there. extra 55,000. Right, and so I've, I've recommended taking 60 of an existing um, reserve of 70 that was specific to Mariner Center to take that and use it rather than uh, take uh, it. I just can barely hear you. We have, sorry, we have, sorry, we have a reserve for Mariner Center which has $70,000 in okay. it. So I'm saying take the extra 60 out of that. Okay, now you, you say that, but how does the financials, financials look with the Mariner Center up to right now? That $70,000 that you have in reserve are they going to be uh, uh, tapping into that for their that, uh, that, shortfall? That's capital money. That's capital not, money? That's not that, operating. N nothing to do with operation. Right. So the 70 is just for capital. Right. So we're, we're good. To, if, we, if we want to use that, there's no problem. We want to use that. Uh, one of the issues that we have, of course, is that, that in the operating budget for Mariner Center, the benefits of this being installed was in their operating budget for this year. So one of my concerns is the time that's, that's elapsed here that we are not getting the benefits of right. the heat recovery system, so. I understand that. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Good, okay, so the first, the motion on the floor that we're dealing with is to accept the recommendation that we put the finances into the heat recovery system. Okay, moved and seconded. Question's been called, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary, motion carried. The second motion that is on the floor, was it seconded, Councillor Lanjo? Okay, it was, okay. So the second motion was for the report. Okay, any further discussion on that? Question's been called, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary, motion carried. We are skipping over number nine. We're going to, what's that? Yeah, additions right here, yeah, number 10. Okay, 10A, crosswalks the meadows. I must have, might have missed this. Who had that, who added? It's probably here, I just might have missed it. Oh, sorry, that's why. Okay. The request regarding the crosswalk by the Meadows on Pleasant Street be referred to the Traffic Authority for consideration, okay. Yes, please, go ahead, CAO. Thank you, Worship. At a recent meeting of council, uh, the question of the safety of the crosswalk uh, in front of the Meadows Seniors Home was referred to the Traffic Authority. Mr. Ernst, his report is attached for your information and he is present if you have any questions. Go ahead, Councillor Landro. Um, and yeah, and I haven't been there, and I, to be honest, when I read this, I'm kind of wondering, do we have signage for that crosswalk? Yes, we do. There is signage, clear and visible. I wasn't sure, I'm checking my walk tonight, but I never really paid any attention where I was walking about it, so we do have adequate signage, you know. Yeah. To have it's it. quite visible from a distance. Yeah, but the only other thing we could do was add uh, additional pavement markings, which would uh, kind of bring attention to the crosswalk. That might be an idea, if that's possible. Is is that crosswalk? Uh, I noticed in some municipal units they have reflective paint on some crosswalks, especially for seniors. Do we use reflective paint at all? Uh, yes, it is. Is that oh, one a reflective paint one? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. So is there, do we need to do anything with this? Good. Okay, Hawthorne Street, Streetscape Project Tender. CAO. Thank you, Worship. This is a, um, a combined project of the Town of Yarmouth as well as the Waterfront Development Corporation. Uh, the town engineer uh, did tender this project and the results are included in his memo and we are under a bit of a time constraint on this uh, as a result of the ECOA money that has come in from, 
through the Waterfront Development Corporation. The good news on that is, is that I got a verbal uh, confirmation that we have received a bit of a reprieve until the end of April in the spring to get the project done and uh, all the money spent and so that will be very helpful. So the town engineer is recommending the approval uh, of the tender to Aberdeen Paving Limited in the amount of $760,590.45 plus HST plus a contingency allowance, sorry, of $35,000 for a total of $795,590.45 plus HST. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? How does that fit within our budget? Is that within the budgeted amount we had for that project? It is, it is slightly above. It is slightly above with the contingency allowance, but I think we're going to be okay. Good. Questions? Yes. <laughs> Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Christmas promotions. So I just received, I received an email. Now my email's gone and a budget that I just got so here's here's what I'm thinking that, that there's this project there's also the gingerbread house there's also um, lobster splash all those things and I believe in our first year of our term that we sat down and we said everybody should sit at one table sit down and come up with a plan of how Christmas is going to happen so that's what I would like to see um, happen out of this that any counselors at the table I know counselor Dawes I just spoke with her briefly last night that she does the lobster splash I think uh, and um, anybody else that wants to sit at that table and come up with who's going to do what it would be perfect counselor McIsaac go ahead thank you your worship I just see in the budget here for five thousand uh, dollars do we have funding for all these events that are supposed to be coming up or is the town planning on paying for all these or is, how's that work so so what i'm what i was just saying is that there's this one that came through that i just gave you a yeah, copy of yeah, the story I, I read, but i did just get it i read that yeah. and um and there's also the lobster splash and the gingerbread housing and there's a number of things that go on at christmas and and personally i don't I, I'm just not ready to do this without putting the whole picture together and and seeing what is that whole Christmas package with the lobster splash, the gingerbread house, anything else that's going on so that we get a clear picture of what we're giving out and, and who's going to take care of it. That's okay, just, okay, so I guess my question is, mm -hmm. all these events mm -hmm. that are supposedly be taking place for whoever does it, it looks like some of the councillors and the mayor are going to not be doing me. this. Not me, but what, yeah. whatever. But I mean, is it going to be on the taxpayer's dime? That's what I want to know. Okay, so you can probably answer that better. But I remember my first year sitting here, and and I believe it was ten thousand dollars that was given out for Christmas promotions, and um, and and just in different areas. So, so that's part of the question like who's who's going to pay for these and how's it going to happen well, the only way you can know that is if they sit at the table okay well I'll, I'll ask the question to the CEO yeah. do we have the ten thousand dollars for all for these promotions and there could be another well let's just say there could be another five or six thousand dollars more yeah. add, add it to this what you're saying your worship right That's what if I'm, I'm not if I'm not wrong no. and uh, the question does have to be asked do we have this money and is it something that that we should be doing as a council. That's another thing that I, I ask, because uh, there, there's there's a lot of important things. Not that this is not important, which it is. I love Christmas, but uh, but th th there always is a cost to this. I mean, should the stores be promoting their own stores? Should uh, whatever events the people that want to have these events uh, do them at, at their cost instead of the taxpayers cost these are just questions that i have and concerns that i have just because we have ten thousand dollars for promotion doesn't mean you shoot it all at once uh, that's no. all i'm saying we got a whole year right yeah and that so, was that's that my concern was just one christmas yeah so i just don't this is one proposal i guess i just don't want to have to deal with another one another one another i one. understand I that I, I, I understand that but yeah. if we only have so much money and jeff can answer that yeah, question go ahead, CAL. 
actually, I can't answer that question off the top of my head. I don't recall what we put in the budget for Christmas. We can, we can deal with this perhaps on our uh, council meeting, whatever. Could we put that on that? We could, on that? Um, unless somebody else remembers or Jerry has off the top of his head. I do remember that we we had talked about a candy can, cane lane thing that we had we had the axe had fallen on that. So, uh, but other than that, I have no recollection of the Christmas yeah. allocation. Okay. Well, if if something comes up, if you can, if there's any information, we'll put that on the agenda. If that's possible, your worship, or however. Okay. I'll just leave yeah. it in your hands. Thank you. Good, Councillor Langeo. Well, just to put a little bit of depth into it. Um, the Christmas promotion project goes back to the 250th where we put a, a fair amount of effort into our Christmas promotion and then in 2012 um, the council picked up a fair amount of change to do a buy local campaign where we uh, went into a variety of, of steps and it was done by volunteers, there was no staff. Um, we have the gingerbread house contest that we started in 2011, we just continued on with that. And that runs about 2,000, 2,500 a year. Uh, the second thing was the lobster splash, which Councillor Dawes has been involved in, and I've worked with her on that as well. Uh, that is also not very expensive. I think that's around 2,000 a year or something like that. It's more for the advertising. The big cost for that is the placemats. We, we, what we did is we bring out placemats at Christmas time that we give to all the merchants in Yarmouth County promoting the events in Yarmouth. Uh, so people know what's happening and it's uh, we've actually got a nano affair sign. So you're looking at another 2,500 on that one. Uh, and then we have over the years, and I'm not sure what we're doing this year, but I believe if I can be corrected, we, um, we allocated a number of uh, dollars for uh, frost park lighting uh, that we've done and we've always been adding to the infrastructure there but the CAO can correct me on this one and maybe Dave knows. But I understand last year we did order lights for Frost Park, but unfortunately the lift uh, was malfunctioning and we couldn't get all the lights up. So I believe we still have a quantity of lights in storage that were never put up on the trees uh, because we didn't have the uh, equipment to put them on. And I think they may be still kicking around. So I'm assuming that we wouldn't be adding to Frost Park this year, be merely putting those lights back up uh, that, that we have in storage, I think they were the red ones, if I'm not mistaken. I know we put money aside last year and did buy lights, but um, I think there was a part on the lift and we couldn't put them all in place. So I'm not sure of the story on that. But uh, to answer Councillor McIsaac's uh, question, um, it's a small investment to keep people in Yarmouth. Uh, it's unfortunate that people in Yarmouth want to go to Halifax and they want to shop and they want to spend money in Halifax. And um, if we can help stimulate our economy by keeping people in the area, I think that's good. To me, spending $10,000 to keep people shopping in Yarmouth is just as good an investment as putting money into Yazda or any other area because we're, we're promoting our community and, and trying to get this idea of people staying in our area. So that's, that's what it's all about. And yes, it, I think one year we were up as high as 20,000 and, and one pro 25 that was it Phil 25,000 that we had put aside for our Christmas promotion campaign so it's money well spent um, the only question your worship on this project is it's focused in the downtown I understand this gingerbread fellow doesn't go up to Stars Road or doesn't wander into Yarmouth South well, very he much actually goes to all the events in town and yes. the event that, that calls yeah but but as but as far as yeah, okay. Yes. So as far as that goes, I guess my question was, because we just got this, and because you, you just mentioned, I think I just added up $6,500 in what you just mentioned, that my thinking is that the people that are doing all these Christmas things need to sit at the table and say, this is what we're doing, and, and I would just like to see one tub of money. I, I just don't think we need to be responding to 10 different... 10 different uh, CAO, you were going to answer a question. Yeah, Go ahead. I, I was just going to comment on Frost Park. I'm not, I'm not aware of the of the lights that weren't put up, but we'll, we'll I'll find out about that if I if I need to. But I guess what I was going to say about Frost Park is that okay, in the see. July storm, we we sustained quite a bit of damage, I would think, to the lights as a result of the high winds. And so, any money that goes into Frost Park this year, I would not be surprised at all if it is simply replacing, uh, trying to put back what we had before. So, uh, I think to manage expectations around. Frost Park this year, it's going to be about replacement and bringing it back to what it was as opposed to adding, you know, a new, a new feature. Uh, Councillor McIsaac. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. But just getting back to listening to Councillor uh, 
Philandro, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, I didn't take my medication today. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, b back then when we had our 250, we had, we had a, an influx of cash, right? We did. Uh, th those days are gone. A a yeah, from our dear, dear friends. They're, they're, he's, they're gone too. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, saying that, I'll, I'll say this. That money is not there anymore. What we have to work with is taxpayers' money. It's all taxpayers' money in the end. So I guess what I'm saying, what I find it really hard to get my head around, and I always have, is if we're, if we're investing in, in things that should be done by restaurants, store owners, for, their, for promotion, we're promoting them when they should be promoting themselves. Placemats, okay, you're saying $2,000, $2,500. They're, they, they promote the, the, the restaurant themselves. Why wouldn't they want to buy their own placemats and join in the Lobster Fest? Why should the taxpayers of Yarmouth buy the placemats? I, 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 I can't fathom why this council would approve $2,500 to buy restaurants and, and eating establishments, placemats to put in front of their, their, the people's patronage, uh, food, food place, play, placemats. I just... I just can't get my head around why we would do that. Me, myself, personally, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd have a hard job doing that. And I don't think we should be doing it. That's not what the taxpayer's money should be spent on. If, if, they, if a store wants to promote themselves, then they should pay for their own advertising. They, and they usually do, and they do a great job at it. Uh, so I don't think it's our job as a council. Uh, it, it's, it, it's a great thing that the lobster splash, whatever it is, but I think they should be convinced, we should be convincing them that they should buy their own place, mats and, and promote Yarmouth as a fine place for fine dining, a fine place to eat. They can, they can devise their own place, mats how they want to put them up and dress them up. It shouldn't be the taxpayers of Yarmouth. But anyway, if, if it's going to cost the taxpayers money to promote storefronts and businesses, I think we have to have a serious look at what we're, what we're here for. If we're here for a promotion, store owners and storefronts and what have you, and different businesses, then I think, I think we ought to look at the M M MGA and see if that's what we're, what we're supposed to be doing. That's just my thought on it. Um, Ms. Natalie, got anything to say? I would agree with uh, Councillor McIsaac on the placemats that restaurants uh, and those private retailers, I mean, they're really responsible for, for generating those things that would bring people in the door. Um, I would add to it that um, tourism is one of our main sectors, economic sectors, uh, and we have to treat it as though it was fishery or any other. So I think it would behoove the town to promote the town as a Christmas destination like we do a summer project. So working with um, those volunteers in the downtown, I think the gingerbread, uh, if it was spread around the whole community, not designated to see one, would be beneficial. Last year, uh, it certainly created a great buzz in the community. Uh, it, it was um, it was an opportunity that kids were attracted to it, adults were attracted to it. It was a fun event. So I think putting the town on the map, not necessarily directing it to any particular retailer, I think that's what the funds should be used for in, in my humble response. Is Thank that, you. Thank you. It's a very yeah. good response. Councillor Mooney? Took this, Councillor McCarthy says she said exactly what I was going to say. I think we've got to bring them into the community, and once they get into Yarmouth, they'll find their way to downtown Yarmouth, Yarmouth South, Milton, or Stars Road, or any other eating destination that they want. But uh, I think we should get together with all the groups. I don't know. Uh, come up with a budget, see what there is. The CAO said he's going to see what, they, what we have uh, available for funds, but you can't be everything to everybody, right? And there's going to be a time when retailers are responsible for their own advertising, but if we can get them in town, then they can, they can be like water, find their, their natural way and, and uh, um, make Yarmouth a Christmas destination. I know when we came up with the booklet program a few years ago, which we were criticized for, uh, we had six or 7,000 um, 
ballots that were put across town, and the, the winner came down from um, Annapolis Royal. He spent $1,100 in yarn was just because of the booklet. So if that's one, I can't, you know, there was more than him that, that came across, and retailers in Shelburne and Digby were asking their municipal units how come they couldn't do the same kind of promotion that the town of Yarmouth did at Christmas time. So even though we were criticized for it, it worked. And uh, I'm like you, Your Worship, I don't want to patchwork this. I don't want, you know, the gingerbread one coming this week, and then the lobster thing next week, and then a parade one, and then something else and something else. Let's get them all in one room, see what they come up with, and if there's a budget or a small amount of money that we have to uh, give these people to work with, then, you know, we'll see where we go from there. Good. Councillor Landry? Well, I'm a little bit stunned by the response from the Economic Development Officer and Councillor McIsaac. Uh, however, I'm going to be very excited to see how we're going to accomplish the same outcome. Those placemats did not promote businesses. Those placemats promoted Central School Christmas program. It, pr it promoted and it let the residents of this community know in one place where every key Christmas activity was. So by saying it's a waste of money, I'm shocked by it because how else are we going to get the word out for these nonprofit organizations who so much rely on that type of promotion to get people in their doors? These groups rely on these events, in some cases, to support themselves for the full year. And for Councillor McIsaac to say, and a economic development officer, no, no, let's not do that. I'll say, okay, tell me for $2,500, and it's not even that much. I think the price of the placemats is $1,250. I do all the collecting and all the information. Believe me, I have no problem turning it over to Councillor McIsaac to do that because it's a heck of a lot of work collecting all of that data and putting it in one place and Sentinel printing, God love them, they've printed them every year very cheaply for us and we give them and they sit in pieces so when people are sitting in the restaurant they can say, oh, next weekend the Boys and Girls Club are having this or Beacon Church is having that or um, St. Ambrose is having their quarrel night or Holy Trinity, it's a list of all the events of Christmas. And to me, it's we. how often have we heard around this table people saying in Yarmouth there's nothing to do. So what's the solution? Let's not tell them what we're going to do. Let's take this out of circulation. Good grief. So if that's what you want, go for it. No, no, that's, that's, not, that's not fair. Everybody needs to be able to say they're, you know, that's why we're here, just to put out what people think. Go ahead, Councillor Dennis. I guess, Natalie, did you know that it was actually uh, basically a bulletin on what was going on for Christmas, or did you just think it was a placemat? I knew it was both. Okay. okay. Yeah. No, no, that's, that's, no, that's not how we do stuff. We don't just say get rid of them because a couple people said, you sit at a table, and like I suggested in the beginning, you sit at a table, you get together, you hash out what you think is best, you take a vote, and then if it's placemats, then everybody's going to be happy with placemats. That's, it's not a, it's, go ahead, Natalie. Sorry about this. No problem. Um, well, there are other methods of communication that can get directly to the audience that you need to get it to. So if, with regards to the school, the Boys and Girls Club, uh, we need to take advantage of those in tandem with anything else. So if we're having, I mean, and this is what the committee, if, if that is the objective and the goals, they're clearly established as to why we're doing Christmas promotion other than to make people feel really good and be in the spirit of the holidays. If one of the clear objectives is to communicate events, then we can start to say, how can we promote it with the tools that we have in place today? I think that we could do it effectively through social media, through our website calendar, through our website, through the town, through going to public events where we can post it in a really creative way, using the Vanguard. There, there are multiple ways, I respectfully say, that we can communicate that. And perhaps that money that could be spent on that, uh, that item that has always been done, perhaps it could be reinvented in another way. So it's not to say that all ideas should be dashed, but I think we need to relook at how to do it in a way that maybe is creative, maybe it gets to that same customer base, but maybe it involves one theme as 
as Councillor uh, Mooney addressed it, that we should have one theme that creates one unified, how are we going to spend sure. Christmas and promote it for the town? Or I should say the county and the town. Mm -hmm. So can we, can we do that? Can, are, are you able to pull that together, the, the people that, are, that have a stake in this, and send it to council as well? Because there's members on council that, that have sat for a long time with Christmas promotions. Um, the downtown people, maybe Barb, with the parade. Frank, I don't know what you have going on, but maybe we could put, are, are you able to do that, Natalie? Is that Natalie's? I can't, I'm not directing her to do anything, heaven forbid. You're asking for information Well, I'm, I'm asking, I'm asking if it's appropriate to set up that meeting with everybody so that we know exactly who's doing what, come out with one picture of, of Christmas, and if people are going to ask for money, then, then that comes out of that meeting. All right, Councilor McIsaac. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. You, you know, <clears throat> I'm not I'm not going to get into a shouting or an arguing match. I, all all I am going to say is about the placemats. Is that uh, well? That's 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 the whole thing. I mean, money's money. I mean, he he can say all he wants to say about about uh, uh, it, it's a waste, not a waste, or whatever, whatever. <laughs> that's that's fine. That's that's he he can say that, or anybody else can say that. All I'm saying is that. We have in this correspondence here for action, there's an organization are asking for money from the town of Yarmouth for uh, an advertisement, to put out advertisement uh, in, their, in, in the paper that they're putting out. So what, I, what I, my thought is, is instead of the taxpayer spending all this money on advertising, why don't we ask the merchants or restaurants if they would like to sub support a placemat being put out on their behalf, to put in a, a financial financial contribution to it. Why not? Sponsor it. Sponsor it. Yeah, like like everybody else comes to council and asks us the same thing. I, I, th there's no harm in that. It's just doing our due diligence, what we're what we sit around here for, and uh, it's easy to say it's only twenty five hundred dollars. Well, you know, I don't know how many times I could haul twenty five hundred dollars out of my ass pocket. I couldn't do it very many times. Maybe once in a lifetime. That would probably be it. So anyway, all I'm saying is, I'm not going to argue the point, but I guess we have to be more creative. I'm like you, Natalie. There, there's uh, different ways. You, you don't have to keep th doing things the same old, same old, same old. And for you passing everything on to me, I don't know where you got that from. I, I, I didn't say, if, if you want to pass it on me, I'll take it. And I'll, uh, you won't have to worry about it again. I can tell you that. And it will never be brought up here again. So, but that's, that's not the way to do things. If you want to take your ball and go home, you can do that also. Okay, children, let's get back to business. <laughs> no, you're right. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Then, then I apologize. But it's, it's, you were right what you said. We need to sit at the table. We need to be each able to have our own opinions, and period. So are we okay with pulling together a meeting, directing staff to pull the correct parties together and hash Christmas out? Did you, go ahead, Councillor. And again, just my only understanding is, is that this proposal that has been brought to us today is for a part of the town. Is it the intention that we're only focusing on part of the town in these endeavors, or are we going to do the whole town? Because the promotional stuff that we did was the whole town. To me, is very important because we have taxpayers in Yarmouth South, taxpayers yep. in Stars Road, and the other items that we were doing reflected everybody. So I do hope that the intention is that it will be for everybody. I mean, and, and no, I mean, I, I couldn't care less what we do, you know, with as long as we promote Yarmouth in some way, you know, as simple as that. I, it's just that I was, I get very defensive. I apologize to the council for that because I'm thinking this was a way to help groups who could not afford it media because. Unlike uh, people in this room, um, I know a lot of people who don't access social media because they can't afford computers. They can very, fairly even afford their power bill, let alone a computer. So social media is not the all end all be all for people. And how many times have Council McIsaac said that? Um, 
it's not the end all. And advertising in the Vanguard and CJLS costs money unless you go in the information, but in order to access the Vanguard, you have to buy it. And some of our residents can't afford that either. So this was an inexpensive way of, of doing it. And I, I'm not going to belittle the point. It's, it's, it's moot. But anyway, it, it, it was a, simply a concept. As long as we can reach people in a very, co very easy fashion that people know what's going on, that's all we're asking for. Councillor Dennis. Uh, I just want to say that uh, Yarmouth is going to have a coupon booklet this year. And uh, for any retailers or businesses that want to put an ad in it, it's going to be in color and it's for $100. And uh, you can just uh, contact your representative at um, TC Meet, uh, at the Vanguard, sorry. And it's going to be free to the people. It's going to come into the, um, uh, which one? The trading post. Okay, so thank you. You're welcome. So can I have a motion to pull this, to direct staff to pull the meeting together? Thank you. Can I have a seconder? Second. Moved and seconded. Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. <sighs> Jarvis Road is, I feel you're good with that. Uh, Heritage Streetscape? Is that you, Councillor Mooney? Uh, I was just going to ask uh, uh, Councillor Langell. I uh, saw on social media, is that the word we use now, Council? Social media about work that Nova Scotia Power is doing on 4th Street, and they're concerned about some of the devastation to the trees on, uh, on that street. And I was just wondering um, if it's appropriate to go through either Communities in Bloom or our Heritage advisory committee about trying to get uh, Forest Street registered as a uh, streetscape. Oh, wow. We've already tried that once. What do you think? Go ahead, Councillor Landrill. Um, two points on that. Number one, this was brought up previously and there was a recommendation from Heritage to Council and Council, I believe, adapted it for staff that any work that's being done on Forest Street through the Nova Scotia Power Corporation or any treatment was to go through the CAO. At least there was some involvement from town somehow on it because we were very concerned about the the safety of those trees because that is a, an area we did or you were quite right we did approach the uh, Department of Heritage Culture etc to see if we can get it registered as a streetscape but they don't do that sort of thing that doesn't stop the municipal the municipal unit from doing it we could easily do it if we so wished um, and that's kind of where it's at now I think the CAO has got some wisdom on CAO yeah, uh, just just on the process that was that was um, <clears throat> recommended by council in the past, it actually has been working qu quite well. My understanding is that Nova Scotia Power has worked with uh, Rodney when they've been in the position to to cut trees in the street right of way, and that dates back even before Rodney, but but continues. So we we were aware of some uh, rumors on in social media. Councillor Dennis made me aware, and so uh, I've had Chad uh, email. Nova Scotia Power to ask them for clarification on their policy for tree trimming in urban areas and uh, so we'll get that in writing and we'll share that so everybody's aware and hopefully debunk any any rumors that that may not be founded and if they are then we can we can act on them if the rumors are in fact uh, accurate <coughs> you good I'm good okay uh, taxi advisory Councillor Mooney oh, as you heard, my piece. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm just wondering, maybe, uh, I think uh, just over the last week or so, maybe it's uh, appropriate for us at council <laughs> level to uh, reinstate the taxi advisory committee. And I think just to liaison between them and us might be appropriate. I'll make a motion that staff investigate the, investigate the uh, feasibility. feasibility, now the re yeah. Yep. Go ahead, CAO. So we, we have a taxi bylaw that provides for a taxi advisory committee. Uh, we brought forward some amendments to that bylaw because the taxi association no longer exists. Uh, the bylaw amendments also included some, some operational items. Council's direction was to go back, remove the operational items, bring forward a revised bylaw that just addresses the governance issues because now the appointments to the committee can't come from the taxi association, they have to come from the taxi industry. Yeah, in, or individual. Gen generally, right. Yeah. So those amendments are ready to go, the document is ready, and will be on your next council agenda for first reading. Okay, that's good. I'll leave it for them. I, I, I'm good with that. Yeah, thank you.
Okay, Fire Committee, Councillor McIsaac. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Your Worship, um, <coughs> it's been two years now since we've never had a, uh, a fire committee. We used to have a fire committee for a number of years. Uh, we were looking at to see what, what committees at that time were, you know, we attended a lot, had a lot of meetings. The fire committee was one that we never had very many meetings. Um, it was a different era back then. I think now uh, we have a new chief. We have a lot of new volunteers. Uh, I think that uh, just my thought, my thought only speaking to some of the, the members out there, that they kind of like to have, they, they miss the committee. It has, a, we, had, we had a chance to, you know, to, to talk and let, let the councillors know what was happening, what was going on with the, with the inner works of the fire department. Uh, I think that perhaps it's time to myself to uh, think we should look at reviving that committee, put it back in place, and uh, to try it out for the next two years or whatever to see, see how it works. Uh, my, uh, my ask is to uh, the CEO, see what he thinks on that. And uh, if it can be done, then uh, perhaps we should direct staff to uh, see what it would take, what it would, uh, how long it would take to get this up and running. Could you, could I just ask one? Could yeah. you speak to the chief about this? Uh, uh, I, I don't yet? know if I spoke to the chief. I think, I think yeah, I think I have. Okay. A and, uh, if, if, but it was some time ago, and okay. uh, actually it was last year, and I think he, he's all for the committee, ha ha having a committee, because uh, it's good liaison back and forth, with, and, and it gives council, uh, the, whoever the members are, a uh, good liaison between, you know, yourself and the CEO and, and the, the new volunteer members. I know I used to be a member of it. I'm willing to sit on, the, sit on it again. I know Councillor Mooney at that time was a member, and I know, and Councillor Councillor Langell, we were all members of that. And uh, anyway, so I'll, okay. I'll just leave that out there and see what the CEO says. And if you need a, a motion, somebody will make it. Okay, so the purpose of the, the fire policy advisory committee that used to exist was to advise council on fire policy. And back in the day when we had one, we rarely met because there were rarely fire policy issues to be addressed with. So the purpose of the committee isn't, or wasn't at least, a, a communications uh, exercise. A, 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 it wasn't about uh, getting all the members at the committee to talk to the councillors. It was about fire policy. That's right. And so if we didn't have a policy recommendation to be dealt with, now I think it would be helpful, frankly, to have uh, a discussion with the chief to see if fire policy, if he foresees changes coming, and if he foresees, foresees changes coming, you could deal with them here, but it might be appropriate to establish a fire policy committee to review his policy recommendations before they come forward to council. Um, so I guess, is it what you're saying just to have a, a committee to say we have a fire committee, you would say that, I guess I'll take it, it's not a worthwhile well, exercise? What I would say in, in terms of a, po a fire committee is it needs a mandate. And if the, if the question is you want more information about, the, about what's going on at the fire department, what the issues are, then I would suggest that, that we communicate to the chief what we want his report to look like and that during these meetings, we, we have an exchange where we're all present, uh, if it's just sharing of information. If it is, in fact, a policy advisory committee that you're gonna look at, at new rules, regulations that, that govern the, the fire department, then I think a committee focused on that, it doesn't involve everybody, that takes a deeper dive than you're gonna get within a 10 minute yeah. time frame. Yeah, I, I, well. yeah. I understand that, but there, 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 are, there are issues with the, uh, the building in general itself. I know two years ago, uh, we we were looking at perhaps building a new building, uh, a fire 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 building. Two years ago, we went and looked at different buildings and stuff like that. So I guess if, if you had a committee, as part of part of that committee, you, you could say that that part part of that committee would be to look at look at the uh, the building of a new fire hall. Uh, as far as policy and and whatever you would just had mentioned goes. That would probably go along with it. So, uh, is it your 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 thought that you as staff would ask the chief the chief if the, uh, a committee would be uh, an asset or just if he's going to bring in new policies, then uh, strike a committee? 
Is that, I guess, is that what you're saying? Or am I getting it all wrong? Well, the, the introduction of the fire hall issue, um, you know, we've, we've, we've asked the chief that question recently in terms of where that fits on his, on his list. And he is more concerned about the, the fleet than he is about the building at this time. Yeah. And I did share the report that was done, I think, five or six years ago on the structure itself, where we yeah. made the investments that that, that, that um, yeah. report recommended. In fact, there's the contractor on site, I believe, at this time, Dave? Doing the no, side. Haven't started yet, but will shortly. Will shortly. Yeah. So we're following through with that. We're yeah. we're making investments as we're as we're the program uh, as recommended. So, uh, you know. I, but I, what harm would it do? Just if, if councillors are willing to uh, to have their time and go out there and, and uh, you know a fellowship with the uh, with the volunteers and the paid firemen. Uh, I, I, I don't know, but I'm not asking you to sit on it, but I mean, if, if, there's a, if, you, if you feel that you don't have to sit on it, then you don't sit on it. And, and that, that's taking nothing from you, because you, you have lots of other I, I stuff that you can do. I won't be attending for fellowship, let's put it no, no, but I mean, no, <laughs> uh, you know, but I mean, that's, that's just part of it, I guess. Yeah. It, it, it was a committee we used to have. And mm -hmm. you know what? I never realized it was all about what you just said, because when we got there, there was no talk of that. It was all talk about a new fire That's station, right. new fire station and other things that they wasn't getting and didn't get. So I, I personally don't think it would be any harm, but you have a different outlook, different take on it. So, uh, but uh, anyway, we'll see who wins this one. <laughs> we leave here, it's all over anyway. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I guess you want to come. <laughs> He's joking, so go ahead. For two hours, I want two minutes. <laughs> um, I'm with uh, Councillor McIsaac on this one. Under the old Fire Advisory Committee, which we had, it gave us an opportunity. Give me an example. This year, I was walking by... Um, I'm, I was kind of digressing here, but I'm thinking we don't, as councillors, are lonely nowadays. We don't get invited to anything anymore. Um, in fact, I was shocked when I got a Yasna invitation the other day. I wrote back to Neil McKenzie, you're sure? I said, last year we weren't invited to these Best of Yasda Awards. Councillors weren't, weren't in, no. We weren't. Honestly. Uh, I didn't get that last year. We didn't get an invite. Anyway, so I said, so my question is on this one. With fire advisory, we used to be part of it. So I was walking by the fire hall. All the firemen are lined out there on a Sunday morning doing their thing, which was great. Well, that was uh, the ceremony for 9-11. Uh, we always used to go to that. I never even knew it was happening this year, you know, and to me that connection between the council and the firemen are very important. Um, we have a lot of volunteers. The volunteers have got a chain of command they deal with, but on the other hand, I know in those social functions that we used to attend as part of the fire advisor, we were given some little tidbits that were kind of interesting and some little backgrounds. And I know it's scary when you have politicians getting tidbits, uh, but on the other hand, it did result in some change that did help in some respects for the betterment of the, uh, of the, of the community. So uh, I'd like to see us really look at that again, because maybe don't call it a, a maybe change this mandate. We can change committee mandate any way we want. We don't have to be stuck into policy. I mean, even if we're an advisory committee that maybe meets once or twice a year, just let the firemen know that we're there to support them. Because here we are working for volunteers, but on the other hand, it would be something that we should, we should do. So I, I agree. I think it's a great idea. Okay, so where do we go from here? <laughs> ah, throw it on the floor. Make a motion that uh, the staff be directed to look into the process of reinstating the fire advisory committee and make a report back to council at the next council meeting. Moved and seconded. Any more discussion? Somebody call for the question. Thank you. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. <laughs> okay. All right. So here's the deal. Um, we are we're at the end of that. We need I need a motion. To adjourn, then we need to go into a council meeting. We can do those tenders. Okay, do that quickly. Okay, thank you. Second. Call this meeting to order. Record of uh, attendance. Any additions or to never meet? Don't even go there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can. You can bring that another time. And go ahead, CAO, if you want to sure. run us through those tenders. Sure. Let's see how we do here. Uh,
That's the wrong link already. I don't, I don't have it in front of me anymore, sorry. Your Worship, uh, we had a tender recommendation from the town engineer concerning the trucking of bulk salt, and the recommendation is to award to G.K. Morris Trucking Limited in the amount of $39.95 per ton plus HST uh, for delivery during, during normal work hours. Moved by the Deputy Mayor. Second, Second by Sandy, Councillor Dennis. Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. We have a tender recommendation from the town engineer concerning the Hawthorne Street streetscape improvements, and uh, his recommendation is that we award to Aberdeen Paving Limited in the amount of $795,590.45 plus HST, that, which includes the contingency allowance. Moved and seconded. Questions. Questions have been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Those were the only tenders? Okay. All right, good. Motion to adjourn. A motion to go in camera. Okay. Um, I have five minutes. I have to leave in five minutes.